for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the June 17, 2019 Selectman's Meeting. First, we have public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, board members. Uh, I am a taxpayer in Hampton. I am a legal resident of Milton Mills, New Hampshire, 10 Hopper Road. Uh, I wanted to come in tonight just to uh, um, offer the input of the entire board of comments that were made a couple of weeks ago by Selectman Wolsey when she stood at this pulpit. And during 2014, of course, I was chairman of the board and Selectman Wolsey served uh, with us, except for Regina, on that board. And I will say that Selectman Wolsey provided extraordinary work product and she worked diligently and she did a fantastic job in 2014. I would say that uh, um, she was decisive, she was forceful, and she placed the uh, interests of the citizens and taxpayers uh, of Hampton foremost in difficult executive leadership issues to include uh, hiring Jamie Sullivan as assistant town manager and personal, uh, personnel director. Uh, Mary Louise led and she knew what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. And she did a good job. <coughs> Excuse me. The employment of Jamie Sullivan as the assistant town manager and personal, personnel director is one of the most important leadership and executive decisions in the modern era in Hampton. Uh, the entire board is rightfully proud of that, uh, as sh should the entire town be. Across all financial, leadership, operational, tactical, and strategic business metrics, Jamie Sullivan's employment in his current billet was enthusiastically and unanimously supported by the entire board of selectmen. That unanimous decision was legal under New Hampshire statute. It was in accordance with the Prudential Affairs Clause of the Board of Selectmen, its duties and responsibilities, and was in compliance with the Enforce Personnel Policy for the Town of Hampton in 2014. That unanimous decision by the entire board was in no way predicated upon any friendship. Going forward, the transition of Town Manager Welch and Assistant Town Manager Sullivan uh, that secondary decision was bilateral, it was congenial, it was enthusiastic, and it was a purposeful execution by all parties involved. And it was again executed by the board with the best interest of the citizens and the taxpayers of Hampton. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. Board members, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Welcome, uh, welcome, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Thanks for the, uh, the invite to come and give you an update on the uh, main break over on, on Route 101. Um, as you know, we've been in here earlier telling you about the main replacement project down there. Well, this is the pipe that we're uh, going to re be replacing, and this event sort of yeah. uh, illustrates why. It's actually the fourth break on this pipe yeah. uh, in this year. It's the one that goes out across the marsh from Tide Mill down to Church Street in the, uh, in the tank. And it's actually one of three transmission pipes uh, that serves Hampton Beach. Um, the break occurred Friday morning, mid-morning. Uh, we ended up having to shut it down to prevent the, uh, the loss of water. As most of you are aware, we, we uh, did a lot uh, in terms of trying to communicate this. We had alerts sent out. We made some phone calls. Um, and we did this really before we had a fix uh, decided on. Um, there was a potential there because it fed the beach. You know, we just wanted to make sure we had everybody um, at least somewhat informed in case it really, really got bad, which, which it didn't. Um, and it's, it's sort of a balance of, you know, getting the word out versus not having complete information. Thus, we have updates like I'm giving you right now. Uh, we also did some automated phone calls to everybody on the beach that we had a phone number for, all of our customers that we had a phone number for. And that was really just a, what we call a soft ask. People sort of cut back on on water use, mainly outside um, watering. Again, because we didn't really know what the weekend was going to look like in terms of demands. Um, and we just wanted to try and hedge our bet a little bit. So the breaks out in the marsh, if you stand on the bridge across the uh, Tide Creek, uh, it's about 300 feet to the east towards the tank and about 80 feet off, off the highway. And as, 
you well know from your experience with the sewer lines, it's technically very challenging to work out there in the, in the marsh, uh, as well as quite expensive. So we, we, we looked at a couple of alternatives, but we decided on basically let's put a, a pipe in to bypass that whole section uh, of pipe. Um, it gives us the reliability that we're comfortable with because we don't want to go through this like Fourth of July weekend or really any other main break through the course of the summer, which is our, our peak um, season. Uh, so if you've been down through there, you'll see we're fusing together six-inch HDPE pipe, the black stuff that is starting to become more common. Uh, the town used it for their temporary sewer pipe. Um, and uh, we expect that to be in service in a couple of days or the end of the week at, at, the, uh, at the latest. And I especially want to offer thanks to the Public Works Department, uh, especially being able to utilize the hangers on the bridge to use for the temporary service pipe. Um, it saved a lot of technical conversations and discussions to be able to do that. But uh, Jen Hale and the other staff we worked in have been really, really great. So from the customer perspective, this is almost a non-event now. Uh, there's been really no impact on operations, no loss of domestic or fire flows, no issues with water quality. Uh, I can confidently tell you now that we can easily support the beach demand, at least under the current weather conditions uh, through the, the current mains on Ocean Boulevard. Essentially, this pipe shutdown is a loss of some of our system redundancy, and it will be resolved by, by the end of the week. However, just as a contingency, we are uh, putting a little more water in the tank down there in the beach just to give us a little more storage. And I really want to emphasize the no changes in water quality. The, uh, there seems to be some misunderstanding in the uh, voice uh, messages that we left. We tried to make it explicit, just a water main break, you know, save some water if you, if you can. We didn't really say anything about water quality. Apparently there's rumors that it was a do not drink. Um, notice that's not the case, it's completely false. You know, the public can be assured that the water's you know, safe and as reliable as it always has been. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, it's up to you whether you want to ask any questions or not. So do we want to waive our um, policy so that we can ask Carl questions oh, this evening? Idea. We have a consensus for that. Would you like to ask questions? Uh, not really. I just had a. Okay, a I'm good asking if we have a consensus that we want to ask questions. Oh yes, that's fine. Do that's you fine. want? Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't you start, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, I, as I expressed to Carl earlier this evening, uh, I appreciate the updates from Brian Mills, and uh, it, it's we're not leaving people in the dark, and it's very proactive of you, and I appreciate the uh, heads up. Yeah, and I can't take the credit for all that. We brought a lot of you know, some people in from our corporate departments mm -hmm. to handle a lot of the communications yep. aspects. So, uh, Rich, I just remember what Selectman Wolseley said. I know you called the beach residents just to warn them that something mm -hmm. could happen, and uh, uh, Brian Mills contacted me almost immediately and let me know that there was potential something could happen. So I appreciate the proactiveness. Yep. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Ditto. Oh, absolutely. You've done a great job. I mean, Friday afternoon you were calling around making people aware. <laughs> what, what, what better can you do? And, and the, you guys have been on top of it. And I was down there today and half that, half or three quarters of that pipe's already fused together. So Yeah, yeah. Our contractors have done a real bang yeah, job. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the, um, I certainly have seen no change in the quality of the water. And I also, you know, got the message um, <clears throat> that the public message sent out I don't think that when that message comes, it comes. It looks like a junk mail. Mm -hmm. and it's too bad it doesn't say water company because I both the last two times I've gotten one, I almost didn't answer it. Um, but then I thought, ah, why not? And then you know, it's because it's an informative. I can see how it would be a benefit in many ways. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those communication tools that we have. Like a lot of us, you know, if it's a number I don't recognize, I'm not probably going to answer it, but. You know, it's a way we get it out to some of the people. So, and I have to thank Brian for his promptness in getting back to people. Oh, I'll pass it on. Thank you for coming tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Any other comment? I have public comment. Okay. Okay, Regina Barnes, mm -hmm. 95 Presidential Circle. Uh, selectman Bean, what he said, or former Selectman Bean, what he said was true. I was a selectman, the, it was a unanimous decision made by that board in 2017. But in my short-lived career as a selectman, I've also realized that selectmen sometimes make decisions that we found out later aren't the right ones. 
And as four years as a selectman, for the public in case they don't know, my first term, I absorbed a lot of information and um, I dealt with it the best way I could when I didn't know the answer. I always knew that I could go see town manager Welch and he always had the answer, whether it was down here in the meeting or upstairs in his office. And a lot of people didn't like that I was talking to him all the time in the beginning, I remember. And I'm like, gee, I wonder why. You'd think they'd be happy that I was talking to a guy with 40 years of town manager experience, public works experience, cemetery, sexton experience, um, something assessing experience. I just uh, went to an assessing seminar last week. I spent the whole entire day with one of the assessing clerks we have who's been going through and the Board of Selectmen a couple months ago instructed the town manager to sort of intervene and oversee the department since we don't have the full-time assessor anymore. Well, we found out a couple things weren't exactly right. Course Fed was down there. I witnessed them down there two or three times a week. I talked to both Beth and Charlene. They enjoy coming down, having him give their guidance on how to get things organized because it's not organized. It's one of several departments that I would say is part of the organization of the town of Hampton is failing. Mm. I would say not finance. Finance is exceptional and we have a mm. tremendous leader in that department and she's here tonight to give her monthly report and I want to make sure I accentuate that. But the assistant town manager position I have no problem with. I have no problem with the assistant town manager. What I do have a problem with has been reflected the past couple months through Selectman Woolsey, and that's losing Fred Welch. I'm not sure that the town as an organization can afford to do that right now. I'm not sure that the town is going to know what to do without having someone oversee the assessing department. The cemeteries, who the cemetery trustees, if you know, came and sought help from the Board of Selectmen a year or so ago. Fred is the one that got involved and organized all that for him, for them. Not saying that anyone else can't do the job, but can someone step in and do it right now? Definitely not. Just like someone couldn't step in and replace Gardner as Secretary of State, because that would have been a travesty for the state of New Hampshire. Just like losing Fred Welsh would be a travesty for the town of Hampton at this period in time. And that is me talking to my board and to my town because when I ran in 2016, my agenda item was to sustain Hampton. And what is happening to Hampton in the town hall and public works and everything that we need that we don't have, infrastructure investment. Again, budget. Don't see any talk about the state of New Hampshire in budget, about infrastructure, about revenue sharing, 1.2 million back to 11, 11 towns in District 24. $1.2 million spread out over 11, 11 towns. Oh, Seabrook's getting 700000 which I'm sure they, you know, worked that out, and I'm glad for them. But we get nothing. We get nothing back. The only leader we have right now, because I've worked under three chairmen, and they all sit at this table, and the only leader we have is Fred Welch. And without him, we have nothing. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll move to the approval of minutes, June 3rd, 2019. Are we doing an announcement in community oh, calendar? yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Would you like to start? Oh, I'll start. Yeah, tomorrow's Senior Citizen Day at the beach. It's, it's sponsored by the uh, Cornerstone up here on Route 27 and the Chamber of Commerce. And I believe it's registration at 1130. I believe they're having a, a barbecue and then uh, entertainment and stuff. So at, tomorrow at the beach, it's supposed to be cloudy. It's not supposed to yeah. be raining. Yeah. So it should be a nice day for senior citizens. Hmm. Rusty? No, oh, all set, thanks. Mrs. Yep. Wilson, Regina? Yes, I do not work for the water company, and people were upset today with Channel 22 because they couldn't watch the selectmen meeting from two weeks ago. Hmm. And hopefully it will be good at the, uh, for the senior citizens. I know a lot of people have been working at it, and hopefully it will be a great thing. Next, we have the approval of minutes, June 3rd, 2019. I'll so move. Second. You're, you're stating public and non-public. Um, yes. Thank and you. next, we have the consent agenda. Number Do one, cemetery. On oh, I'm sorry. 
Yes. All those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have the consent agenda, cemetery deeds. I like to remove three and four Victoria Inn and Pavilion because I like to vote on the rest of the consent agenda, but I receive paychecks from Victoria Inn, so I like to abstain from those. Okay. Conservative, two is Conservation Commission, three is Dance Hall Permits, four is Entertainment License, five is Heritage Committee Appointment, six is Letter of No Objection, seven is Limousine License, eight is Police Patrolman Contract, nine is Police Sergeant's Contract, ten is Pool Table Permit for Wally's, eleven is Parade and Public Gathering License, 12 is road closure permit, 13 is use of town parking lots, and 14 is utility easement agreement. I'll so move that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have appointments. Do we, do we take up the one we removed? Hmm? We have to take a separate um, vote on that? On the removed okay. one, yes. On the removed Items, all those in favor? That, I don't. You need to state you want that. to state again which ones you removed. Uh, number three, dance hall permit for Victoria Inn and Pavilion, and number four, entertainment license oh, for three Victoria and Inn and Pavilion. Right. I make a motion that we approve those. All those in favor, four and one. Next, we have Christy Pulliam. How are you doing tonight? Hey, how are you guys? <coughs> So I have the um, May financials. You guys should have received them on Friday, yep. and they were also uh, posted to the website too on Friday um, afternoon. So it's the fifth report for 2019, and the expenditure target is 41.67%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the difference in revenue from 2018 to 2019. The 2019 revenue is higher than 18 by $259,288. I do remind everyone, though, that last month I had discussed that the majority of that is made up of a um, premium return from Primex, which is um, the holder of our workers' comp and property liability of 224914 So we're only really slightly higher on revenues from 18 to 19. The month's total income was $633,776. Of that, motor vehicles came in at $382,412. Interest on taxes at $78,883. Building permits at $20,202. Departmental income at $71,109. Parking lots at $22,756 and the real estate trust at $48,576. On the expense side, you'll find that we're 37.57% spent or under budget by $1,032,138 or 4.1%. The under expenditure amount is higher than normal for this time of year. In May of 2018, we were under budget by 717,000 and in May of 2017, we were under um, budget by 713000 With the summer, seasons, see, summer season gearing up and the weather hopefully improving, we do expect the gap will close um, as we get going into the summer. Mm -hmm. This month, I'm just going to run through and let you guys know where each of the major groups stand in regards to the target for the month. The executive section is at 38.05%. Election registration and vital statistics, which is a town clerk, is at 35.83%. Finance is at 39.77%. Assessing is at 29.55%. The tax collector office is at 37.35%. IT or management information systems is at 33.65%. Legal is at 51.22%. Personnel administration is at 44.43%. Planning department is at 42.59%. Zoning is at 37.67%. General government buildings is at 47.34%. Cemetery is at 28.7%. Municipal insurance is at 37.26%. 
Parking administration is at 28.75%. The police department is at 33.46%. Fire department is at 39.42. Public works, or building, I'm sorry, is at 37.17%. Public works is at 34.51%. Welfare is at 30.87%. Recreations and Parks is at 35.97. Library is at 42.52%. And the Conservation is at 37.23%. You'll also notice on page 18, and I think on to 19, um, the Warren article activity has increased significantly from a April to May based on the weather improving and being able to get some of those uh, larger projects started. And the other funds, the recreation fund is at, has a balance of $262,766 with $8,058 being awarded in scholarships. Uh, the cable fund has a balance of $244,903. This dropped significantly um, with the payment that was made to SAU 90. Fund, the private detail fund has a balance of $225,651. The EMS fund has a balance of 327,457 and the wastewater system development charge. Um, the fees collected in 2019 total 16,140 and the balance in that account is $197,444. So that is uh, the financials. Thank you, questions. Wastewater development Warren. fee, Christy, that's our toilet tax, right? Yep. The new uh, bathrooms <laughs> yes. that come in. Well, I mean, technically. Additional bathrooms, yep. <laughs> so adding to the wastewater uh, plant by having the new bathrooms built. Yes. Yep. And there's a little fee. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Regina? Yeah. So thanks for the report, Christy. Awesome job as usual. Um, I had asked, do you think it would be possible for June when you come in if you could bring the balance of the, I, I know it's that. not audit, oh, you do have it? It's, the audit isn't complete, but yeah. I do have um, their preliminary trial balance, and so I did bring that, because you had sent that email, and I did see it. I just didn't have a chance to respond. Okay, I had a, perfect. took some time off, so. Good. Um, no, that's awesome, thank you. The preliminary balance for the unassigned fund balance, Regina had sent an email asking that, so for, I have the, preliminary trial balance from the auditors and it's uh, predict, projected to be $8,032,311. We also, um, in 2019 on the warrant um, that was voted on in March, we had $591,273 that will be coming out of that projected balance. So that would bring it down to um, $7,441,038. Hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so the audit that was completed and that would the, it, it's um they've sent me their first draft of the trial balance for me to go through. So that's why I hesitate to say that's why I call oh, it okay. a projected still yeah. because I need to go through now, make sure all of their balances are lining up with mine. Okay. And if yeah. they're not then we will have to go back. You being an auditor will know we'll have to go back and right. you know yeah. make sure. So it's kinda like the checks and balances, but I don't expect that number to change drastically. Um, but I just never like to say that it's set in stone just yet. Uh, the audit itself should be done within at least the month, if not sooner. I mean, we're very close to being at the end for the audit. Okay, perfect. I'm sure it's gonna uh, come out great as usual. And then the other thing on the expense summary, I just wanted to point out, you say we're under budget by about, well, a little over a million. Yes. But like you said, we're only through May, and I know one of my favorite parts of the budget is the police department support services, and that's only at 194,000 right now through May, and we're budgeted at 791,000. We all know why, because the summertime, mm -hmm. it's all our forces that are down there taking care of everything. So I'm sure that will uh, go up quite, quite nicely and be right in line with what we have budgeted. Mm -hmm. And then also on the cable fund, I wanted to say that so, so far to date, we have, we've received 2019, I don't even know. So we got 168,000 in franchise fees. So I think what I did was I estimated it at 60% um, of that number would be a little over 100,000. 
Mm. So I know we get quarterly. So I think that's that would reflect two quarters. Just that's a hundred percent. So of what we get for franchise fees, which is now all hitting this fund. Fund. Yes. So if we were to only have forty oh, percent yes. go to it, sixty mm -hmm. percent could perhaps come back to the town of Hampton to offset the general tax rate. So I calculated that at almost one hundred one thousand. If we would decide to do that in the future. And that's all I have. Thank you. And I just wanted to, another thing on the um, under expenditure. Um, when I was reading through this, I was noticing like public works is so low and stuff. But I think it's important to point out that there's positions that are still open and have been unfilled. Yes. And so those wages help. I mean, even my department was a little low because I've been short staffed and stuff. So I think it's important to just point out that some of the under expenditures yeah. are related to weather, but also to departments not being fully staffed. But when we make the budget, we expect to be fully staffed. So we always are budgeting for mm -hmm. all of the positions that have been approved in those departments. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Waddell, yeah, you said revenue is slightly higher, right? Yes. And one thing was a one time two hundred and twenty four. Right. 000. So if you take that two twenty four off the two fifty eight, you get about thirty. So we're only really higher by about thirty five, thirty, thirty thirty to thirty five thousand. Okay. And in most years the revenue goes up, doesn't it? With with vehicle registrations Correct. and so is that something to think about? Is that something we should be worried about? Revenue income? I don't think so because um oh. I mean we still have a lot of things coming up like the highway subsidy rooms and meals, you know, so it's just I will be adjusting because it's the end of a quarter in June. So I'll be doing a new projection on revenues because we do that every quarter. Mm -hmm. So once we do that, I can relook at that um, when I come in in June okay. and see how if it's lining up better with what we expect it to be when we um, go to set the tax rate. Okay. And when you talk about the unassigned uh, uh, fund balance. Yes. You're, you're talking. You're not talking about a cash balance, right? No. You're talking about an accounting. No, the treasurer would want to make that very clear. That is not a cash balance. <laughs> right. And what percentage is that of our? Um, if you if you know what to hand it. I don't know. I just know from when the tax rate. I brought that because I figured someone may ask when the tax rate was set last year. Um, if we had had the eight million and thirty-two, we probably would have fallen right between the. Just over the 10%, probably without doing math real quick, probably at about 12% of the um, what the DRA does for their recommended retention. So, and, and the recommended retention is? Is, um, well, they break it down. They start at 5. They do 5, 8, 10, and 17. So mm -hmm. at 12, at the 8 million, we'd probably be right around 12%. Yeah. Actually, we'd be, yeah, right about 12%. Because um, when the tax rate was set last year, November 10% was 6,604 and 17% was 11,227. We've always tried to at least keep it somewhere between the 5 and the 10, I think is what Fred and I have kind of set as our goals in the past. He's shaking his head yes, so I'm going to say he agrees. <laughs> yeah. And and the departments that are that are over you're well aware of those departments and you're well aware of what's going on that there. are overexpended? Yes. Yes. Yep. And keeping an eye on that? Yeah, I think most of us were doing fairly well this time. I think legal was the only, and then library, but library tends to be more of the timing. And if they ever go over, they have to pay back to the town anyway from their um, yeah, fund. from their trust. So yeah. I think the only other ones, and then um, insurances and personnel administration. A lot of times we don't have control over those types of things. Personnel administration, the drivers there are the buyback which is done as we've talked about in the past. And then the employee separation line continues to go up as Fred and I have discussed. So mm -hmm. thank you. But if people choose to leave, then good, good report. And a bunch of those are one time fee. Correct. Yeah. The fees. So it's not like, yeah. And so we have a couple more big retirements coming up this month, I believe at public works two that I'm aware of. Um, we already had Dan Gidley from the police department. So hopefully yeah. we'll kind of slow down now. Um, and not, I haven't heard about anyone else. So hopefully for the rest of the year, if we can level out there, that will also help to level out that section of the budget. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Your report was very informative, and thank you very much for uh, talking, you know, giving us the report. Now, are you going to talk about I was going to say, can I hop into the next chair? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I, so I didn't make the agenda, but I was also going to share with the board. Yeah. Everyone knows we've been working on... Um, on um, 
our website and we are actually hoping to launch it. I had showed it to you guys a couple of months ago and we are hoping um, to launch it this week. So I just kind of wanted to use this as a little bit of a public forum to get the word out. We will also be doing through our constant contacts to our news group, letting everybody know that the new website is launching. Um, they'll get to it the same way they got to the old website, but when they get there, it will look different. So we, our departments have been working very hard on this to update their pages and make sure that their interior pages look well, as, long, uh, as well as um, Dylan has really spearheaded this project from the IT department, Paul also, but Dylan has really kind of made this his project and worked very hard on this. Um, so you guys can see here, we have the seal, we have, we'll have pictures that every time it refreshes, a new picture will come up. Susan Thrumston from Public Works has been taking a lot of the pictures for us. Um, so a lot of them are ocean and marsh and we're eventually gonna get pictures of the town hall and all of the different fire department, police department, all those departments to put in here too. So over here, these buttons will scroll when you scroll with the page. So you'll always have these buttons. You'll always be able to get back to the home. Notify me will become the new um, alerts for people and it's, very in detailed you'll be able to sign up for alerts for whatever you want multiple alerts you'll have your own login you will be able to i mean residents not just you guys but everyone have their own login they have all the different categories and they'll be able to go in and sign up for notifications from any of these different groups and the email will come directly to them email or text whatever they choose or both um, They'll be able to, if you click here, you see your hours and your staff. So we have all the, you can click there to go to the staff directory. And then we also have all the hours of all the departments. We have the departments there, minutes and agendas. And then across the bottom here, we have all of these buttons for register and pay, important documents. The Channel 22 live stream will have a button right there. Trash and recycling. Property tax information will get you right to the vision. So the people, if they want to look at property tax card. And then employment right now is just job opportunities. We hope to eventually turn that into not only job opportunities, but things for current employees and put all like the collective bargaining and those types of things there. And then when you click here, it'll just bring you back home. Um, and then when you scroll down here, we have alerts and calendar and news. So our goal right now, and we're gonna, we'll be able to do, um, see where people are clicking, what people are interested in, and gather all of that data. So this will hope possibly change as time goes on what we, what, once we see what people want. But right now alerts will be used for uh, what you would expect them to be used for, a road closure, um, maybe a water main break, uh, the transfer station, um, the equipment failures and trash schedule changes and things like that. The calendar right now is strictly like meetings, um, but once the departments start to use their calendar and put their events on their calendar, they can also be linked right there. And then news will be things that are still important, but aren't something that maybe someone needs to know right then and there. So we kind of did that, move the alerts over to the left because most people you know, will go look left to right. So. Um, and then if you ever wanted to see everything that was on the calendar or everything under alerts or news, you can always, you scroll down a little bit more and it'll, you can do view there. And then um, down at the bottom, there's some frequently asked questions and the contact information again and some helpful links. And then up here, you'll be able to search for things. So once we go live, you can't do it now, but if you type in my name, everywhere that my name appears, whether it's in a financial or the minutes or the agenda or any of you guys, anyone, anyone's name or topic or anything, wherever it appears, it'll just come up just like when you search on any other website, which I think is great because people haven't had the opportunity to do that on our current site. So we're all very excited. Um, under government, you see there's the board of selectmen, all your boards and committees, your departments, and then we kind of on the right side there, other types of governmental um, agencies we put up there. Residents, we have different things that residents may want to do in the town, and also links to the schools and stuff again. Business, um, what businesses may need for permits and stuff. And then visitors, if people are want to come to Hampton and are looking, we tried to there put some things that people might be interested in there. And all of this will grow in time. It's just kind of we have to have a starting point, and then 
once we get feedback and stuff, we can add things to this all of the time. And then how do I, and it just kind of gives you, you know, different things that you might want to find, bid opportunities, how do you contact different departments, apply for, or register and pay. Right now, you can, those are the only things that you can uh, register and pay for online at this point. Um, we hope to eventually have people be able to do fill out like their building permits and fire permits and things like that right there and be um, synced right to the departments and stuff. We are starting to do fillable forms and all of that. So like I said, we're all very excited and hopefully everyone else will be excited as well. So I just kind of wanted to get the word out on that and show it to everyone. Fred's chuckling. <laughs> Because he knows we all want to pull our hair out. But um, <laughs> like I said, everyone's worked very hard. And so hopefully everything will go smoothly when we do this and hope to do it within the next few days. And unless you guys have any real negative feedback that you see something drastically different that you would like changed or we're kind of pretty much locked in at this point with the design because I had brought it to you guys before, before we signed off on it and stuff. But we can change all of these buttons later on after we see what people are clicking on. We'll be able to update all of that. We can, you know, do all of those things once we see what people like and don't like and stuff. So these buttons down here, I literally went around to the town employees um, asking, you know, what do you guys get questions about, you know, in assessing that yeah. isn't related to your department and kind of came up with a list and it was amazing how many of them said the same things over and over. So we tried to derive the little green buttons on the left and those uh, circle buttons on the bottom. We tried to... Um, link those buttons to the questions that people get asked constantly to make it easier for the yeah. person who is looking for things. And these are uh, very mobile friendly too, just so you know, you just have, you have to scroll more of course, because your mobile device is smaller, but you scroll right in order of how they are here. So when you're on your phone, you'll have alerts first and then the calendar and then the news, but it'll all be right there and much easier to access and much user friendly compared to what we think we have now, so. That is the website. I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments. Well, or It looks like a work of art to me. I think Thank you've you. done a great job. Well, I won't take credit too much, but Dylan. Dylan and IT, those guys did a great job. So mm -hmm. It really it looks very nice. So Other comments? I can't imagine anybody having a question after all that information. You've got, got everything couple. right there. Okay. Number one. You you can get a report on how many clicks on yeah. each one, mm -hmm. which is very that's good, very yeah. good for you, right? Very uh, very good for IT, yep, yep, and for all the things. The other thing is in today's internet and web, people are very very concerned about privacy. Yep. Yeah. Do you collect cookies? Do we collect cookies? You know, when somebody clicks on it, do you collect information on that person? No. No. no, but we will be able to tell what people are clicking, so that we can tell you guys. Oh, you know, everyone's clicking on yeah. The hours for the transfer station, maybe we want to make that a button and stuff. Right. But, but this but is all main, the whole website is outsourced and maintained by Civic Plus. And yeah. it's a huge company who yeah. maintains. So it will not be in house at all anywhere. So we won't have any yeah. of that information. And here. they won't be collecting any information Correct. either. So I mean, people right. can be well assured that privacy is still yeah. good. Yeah, which is very important, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Any Excellent. other comments? Thank you so much. Yep. Is that it for tonight? I have one more thing one to show you real quick oh, that Channel 22 has been working on. So this is uh, something that they were, that we've had a couple people ask because uh, apparently the schedule um, no longer runs on Channel 22 with the new website. When they first went live with the new um, channel, there was a setup similar to this that they were using, but we had received some negative feedback. So I asked the new part-timer at Public Work, or at Channel 22, I'm sorry, to come up with something similar to that, but that was maybe more visually mm -hmm. more friendly mm -hmm. to the viewer because we've had a couple people call who were interested in the schedule because they enjoy watching Channel 22. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of what they came up with, and I will make some screenshots and send it out to you guys because we would eventually like to get your opinion if this is something that we would like to do. So basically what this would be is now... We just, in between meetings, we strictly run a slideshow, but the slideshow doesn't have the schedule on it. So this, where it says story time there, that would be the slideshow. On the right side, it would show you what the program schedule is for that current day. Yeah. And then across the bottom, it just tells you what's coming up next and then the time or 
the time also fluctuates back and forth. They had a couple pictures here that I will show you real quick. Um, it fluctuates back and forth between the time and the seal um, down in the bottom right corner. So, mm -hmm. like I said, I don't, this wasn't anything you guys were given, so I'll pass it out to you so you can see, but I just kind of wanted to show you that and what they um, had come up with as an option to accommodate the people who were looking for a schedule to be for the channel on the TV. It is on the um, website, but not everyone uses a computer and some of them just watch Channel 22 at home, so. Mrs. Wilson. I'm really delighted with the public works presentations on the trash and the waste and recycling. That really gets your attention. And the bright Their colors. Shows, you mean? Hmm? The slides that they have done? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, that's marvelous, especially with all the talk about waste and recycling and how do you know what you're supposed to do. And I think that's great. A, a third grader would figure out their waste and recycling looking at that, and it's, it's terrific. Wait, and we're working with them right now also. I don't know if you guys have watched the PSA that the Recreation Department did, um, but that's up on the website that Channel 22, the part-timer, the new part-timer gentleman did. And we're working with Public Works to do one on trash and recycling and some other things down there. We're just waiting for them to have some time, but um, the gentlemen at Channel 22 are ready and willing to go out and do another one of those, so. It look, this, I like it, <clears throat> I like it very much, the time frame thing. It looks, yeah. it's so. a big improvement. Yeah, so like I said, I will pass, I'll um, get a couple screenshots out and get it out to you guys in like a memo type of form and then um, if it's something that you guys are interested in doing it, like I said, it's only going to replace what the slideshow is now. So the slideshow will still be there, mm -hmm. but it will have additional information. Okay. Um, and then when the meeting starts, the meeting will be full screen, because that was my big concern. I said, yeah. well, I wouldn't want the meeting, you know, to just be a little tiny yeah. corner, but the meeting would still be full screen. Mm -hmm. It's just that this part, you know, when the slideshow is running, it would give them additional information. So if anyone at home wanted to know what was coming up, they would be able to know, you know, at two o'clock today, the budget committee's playing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Seeing Just none, thank you for coming in tonight. One yeah. more quick thought. My concern is being able to read it, and it's, it's good except when you have Build a Lego, NASA, Saturn V, that, that print is small, and it might help to have black print there. Those are the slides as they come in from the individuals who are asking us to put those slides yeah. up. We don't alter them it's because hard. it's come in from that person. If, it, if yeah. we want to alter them, I believe we would probably need some approval from somebody I see what like you're the saying. Board of Selectmen yeah. to change people's slides because I would hate to yeah. instruct the guys on Channel 22 or, who are kind of working under the finance yeah. right now, the part-time gentlemen and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be the one to be making the judgment calls, yeah. you know, on changing the slides. But part so. of the idea of this is so people, especially senior citizens, right. can read what it's saying. Right. The program schedule is fine on the other side. Yeah. Well, what we could do is maybe when, when we're talking to people about how they build slides. Well, actually, as part of the website, I was um, saying that Channel 22 really, now that we actually have someone in there uh, on a regular basis, I wanted them to come up with some different um, informational slides that we could put on to the new website on how to build slides and stuff to help. Because I think if you just tell people that, they're going to look at it and go, oh yeah, that makes good sense. Right, and if someone from like the library or recreation sends it to us and it's not good, we will send it back. But when it's someone that's outside of maybe a town department, I don't know, you know, yeah. we don't usually send them back. But we can start doing that, sending them back, going, you know, visually, um, this could use some improvements and give them some suggestions. Mm -hmm. you know, I think your discretion is going to work out well. Thank you. Thank you. And you have uh, cheerleaders in the audience tonight? I have cheerleaders in the Who's audience. <laughs> My mom is visiting from California. She was here for all. I had two graduations and um, two confirmations. So big party and celebrations at our house over the past weekend. So, so well, welcome to Hampton. <laughs> yes, you have a lovely daughter and we're very impressed with her. Yeah. She's Thank you. Big, every, she's, everyone is, uh, yeah. she's, every, she has we a lot of We enjoyed seeing her, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving on, we have next Skip Webb, president of the James House. In full costume. Ah. 
I think it's Mr. James himself. The ghost has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you to excuse my etiquette. I'm going to remove my hat so I have better eye contact. Mm -hmm. It adds to your persona, though. You think I should put it back on? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> it's the charge of the president of the James House Association to remind the selectmen uh -oh. periodically that the James House uh, and the James House Association is really a steward of the property yeah. for the town of Hampton. That in the end, because of the way the deed reads, if we fail or if we decide that we will not continue with the museum, we have to offer it to the Historic Society. If the Historic Society refuses the offer to take it over, or they take it over and they fail, or they take it over and don't want to do it anymore, it automatically passes to the town. Currently, we know that the Historic Society pictures it as an extremely expensive project, mm -hmm. extremely time-consuming project. So it would, be, at, if something happened at this time, it would go directly to the selectmen to decide what to do with it. Uh. We can't sell it. We can't change the use. We can't rent pieces of it. We have to run it as a living history museum. Mm -hmm. We have to give free education to the public on the history of the James family, the James house, how the James family interfaced with Hampton history, and the social and economic circumstances between 1702 in 1941. That's a large amount of history that we handle. Second thing I am required to do is to periodically, when something special is happening or when I, something bad is happening, I'm supposed to notify the town. Everything is good at the moment, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you have to worry about on the bad part is that uh, I have trained five people capable of taking over the presidency. None of them want to take it over because of the amount of time it takes. Yeah. And the town should realize that if we give up operation of the James House, pass it to the town, it would require at least one full-time employee, if not more, to operate it as a living history museum. Uh, it is a full-time job for me, but I enjoy it. So I don't mind giving the town the time, and I don't mind keeping the expenses of it off of what you have to charge the town people on their taxes to operate it. Uh, your charge is, if we do give it up, to run it as a living history museum, the same charge as we have. Good news, at the end of August, we should have the siding completed and the restoration of all the windows. Good. That is a $56,000 project. Yep. LCHIP is helping us with half of it, so 28000 is coming out of people's pockets yep. that are either members or people that are interested in the James House plus the few 
fundraisers that we run. Mm -hmm. Bad news, it's time to put a new roof on. New roof, uh, I have only been able to get one quote at $26,000. I have decided to go ahead anyway, applying for an L chip grant. An mm -hmm. uh, L chip good. grant, if you have three good estimates, chances are you might be able to get one. Uh, over one, uh, over two thirds of the applicants for uh, L chip grants are refused. But because of the fact that we would be prepare, uh, protecting the oil chip grant that is in place now by putting a decent roof on the top of it, uh, chances are pretty good that we would get the grant. One of the things that is paramount in getting the grant is to have the support from the community and be able to prove it. So one reason, the other reason why I'm here tonight is to get your support for replacing the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we have to replace the roof? Uh, the uh, wood has gotten soft. Mold has started to root into the roof. Yeah. And in the summertime, the shakes get warped. They come up. Uh, so it's very bad looking. It is still good for another year, mm -hmm. possibly two years. So uh, we are trying to get the grant now, make sure that we are covered yeah. instead of waiting to the last minute. Want to invite you and the public to our opening day, which is Saturday. We're going to have a great concert, folk concert, with uh, three separate performers. We're going to have tours starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, the house, the property. And during that time, if you've taken the tour, our new exhibit, our weaving and spinning exhibit will be on display. The Textile History Museum in Lowell has closed. And they were looking for museums that would continue to give the education that their museum was giving. We are lucky enough to have ended up with two Great wheels, wow. several different types of what they call squirrels, mm -hmm. which uh, are what you put the mm -hmm. yarn around to create what you do this for now. <laughs> 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 Taking it off of a ball and putting it on oh my a, an item that would yeah. make it easier to put on the loom. Yeah. We have a loom out there uh, that's been donated to us by the Old Schwab Museum Good. in Arlington. And uh, that loom is identical to the loom that the James had, if with one exception, it's not bolted to the floor, it is on skids. We are still going ahead with the clearing of the property, people say, gee, why don't we have our apple orchard and pear tree orchard yet? Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a long time to kill yeah. the weeds yeah. and discourage them without using yeah. chemicals and without digging them up. We can't dig them up. We dig them up, we lose the irrigation system mm -hmm. that's still visible. We also do hand to use that irrigation system to plant the apple orchards and the pear tree orchards. Mm -hmm. We are definitely looking for people that are interested in gardening. Anyone that is waiting on the waiting list at the Victory Garden, appreciate them contacting us 
we can give them a free plot. No, this will be a plot for them. Wow. It will be maintaining the historic garden at the James House and the garden that we intend to plant next year. They will get the first choice of the produce from that garden. <laughs> They're looking for a group of at least five people to maintain it. The bad, one bad news uh, is that the ground around the building has come eroded. It's settled in such a way that the, on every side, the water is going in under the building or into the cellar. So this year we are going to have a project out there to fill that area and bring it so that the water flows out into the property instead of into the house. Uh, this is not a real problem at the moment, but it is a fairly expensive project. Uh, it is a project that we can do on our own, so we'll be doing it on our own. We will not be hiring contractors. I mentioned the roof. We're having a very hard time getting contractors to bid on the roof. We operate the same way you do. We require three bids before we go ahead with anything. I only have one bid. So if there are any roof contractors <laughs> to put wood roof on, uh, we're looking for quotes on both cedar and yellow cedar. Yellow cedar being Alaskan cypress. Yeah. Uh, the Alaskan cypress lasts longer. The uh, regular cedar, uh, though, is cheaper. So we are looking at the cost between the two to see which is yeah. the better bet for us to put on now. It's a longer life mean we should pay that larger amount? Yeah. Or should it mean that it's not that much longer and we should stick with the red cedar? Mm -hmm. Wow. We ask all of you to the event this Saturday. It's going to be fun. The <laughs> folk music is uh, all three performers. So what time does the event. event start on Saturday? Ten. Beg my pardon? What time does the event start on Saturday? At 10 o'clock is the yeah. start of the property tour and the house and tour. And what time does it go to? Uh, 10 o'clock is the start of the uh, weaving exhibit. Yeah. Those will go until 12. At 12, there is a free lunch provided by the directors. At 12.30, there will be a paranormal tour <laughs> and then after the paranormal tour will be our annual meeting. The concert will continue through all of those. Mm, it sounds like a, a big event that you have planned and I don't know how they would do it without you yeah. and uh, you're gonna have make there's big shoes to fill so I hope that somebody that you'll meet with success in finding someone to succeed you. Do we have questions of his report? Rusty. I don't have questions, but I'd, I'd make a motion that we support him in his efforts to go after the grant for the uh, mm -hmm. LCHIP grant, as uh, uh, I believe that the whole town supports also the, the, the excellent job they yeah. do over there. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. What about any other questions for Skip? I Mrs. Just, Wolseley? He deserves a huge round of applause. For, for donating his time and his and his uh, real love of what he's doing. Thank you. I mean, Thank you look you. wonderful in your you look wonderful in your costume. You brought us back. <laughs> well, you know the reason why I'm in this costume. The last time I appeared, I did not appear in the costume. <laughs> and nobody um, recognized you. 
And that's the only thing that I got criticized for was the fact that I didn't I wear remember the when you used to do it with your wife. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. It was a lot to remember. Regina? Yeah. I'm good, thank you. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. We really I appreciate it. I should mention one other thing quickly, and yeah. that is that um, we have broadened out. We are uh, serving not only Hampton, but we do serve into uh, Maine and Massachusetts. Wow. Uh, Haverhill has taken a very heavy liking to us, so we have been uh, on uh, Haverhill Public Television half-hour interviews mm. twice. We've also been on their radio station half-hour mm. interviews twice. Uh, we've been on public television in Portsmouth uh, twice and on their radio station twice. Amazing. And if anyone would like to join Skip and his crowd over there, they can get in touch, in touch with Christina and Sheila uh, Osman, the town manager's um, administrative assistant, and she'll get them in touch with you. And we'll hope that some really good stuff happens. Very so good. thank you. I like that arrangement. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Uh, I would like to thank Fred Welsh for uh, yeah. complimenting his department and the fact that I had a circumstance where I wasn't able to make my appointment mm -hmm. on the 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the emergency room instead. Mm -hmm. uh, his secretary waited for uh, two days, giving me one day to answer <laughs> as to why I wasn't there if I wanted to. But when it went into the second day, she and Renee, the director of yeah. the uh, Recreation. Recreation, Parks and Recreation, yeah. uh, called me to make sure that I was okay, they knew my normal punctuality, and this just wasn't to what I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a great comfort to me, but it should also be a great comfort to anyone that's active in town government yeah. that is uh, up there in age and liable to hit a medical circumstance. Well, thank you. So thank and if you, you ever have any problems, just let us know. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Skip. It shows you what type of a town Hampton is. They look after everybody, and people like Christina does it all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, so moving on, uh, we have Donna Rosa Burke parking at Sun Valley Request and Streetlight Request at 75 Plymouth Street. Join us. Hi, good evening. Um, good evening. Thank you for, for the board for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, my name is Donna Rosa Burke. I live at 75 Plymouth Street yeah. in uh, uh, Hampton, Sun Valley. I'm, I'm here on behalf, uh, for, well, for two reasons, but first on behalf of my parents. Uh, Dominic Rosa, age 93, and uh, Geraldine, age 90. They've been residents of Sun Valley for over yeah. 40 years. Um, we are currently um, taking care of them at, at home. Uh, we have uh, full-time help to take care of them, and they're at uh, 27 Thornton Street. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know the neighborhood. Well, I'm sure you know the neighborhood, but um, you know, parking is very restricted. Um, they have a small house. They have, um, my, my mother has a car and they have one parking space. There's no parking on either side of the street, okay. and there is, but there is a um, town parking lot. Um, so I have uh, hospice twice a week, yeah. I have um, meal delivery, mm -hmm. and I have caregivers. In the winter, parking's not a problem because my neighbors aren't there and they allow us yeah. to park in, in their space. Uh, but in the summer, and I'll, we're also, a, a, this, this, they have nine children. Um, so it's just uh, parking is an issue. So I was just what in I mean as you know probably in Seabrook there's visitors parking. Yeah. And I was looking if um, I wanted to make a special request if there's any way that it would only obviously only be during the day because the parking uh, there's no overnight parking in that lot they would have to move but that's so and, and they wouldn't park there at night anyway because um, they can they, they can park in front of my mother's car, but uh, during the day there's just caregivers and every and I'd like to be able to maintain them at home and it's only a summertime request if I could possibly get some kind of uh, visitors visitors parking or something so that the caregiver during the day 
uh, Monday through Sunday, um, could park during, it's only be one car in the, um, in the lot that would allow the meal delivery and the, the VNA and the family, um, a, a place to park. Mm. So I know you probably have to think about it, but that yeah. was, um, um, do you want to talk about the, um, also about the, uh, street light? Yes. Yes. Um, in the past, um, I mean, th there's, it, it, it seems like uh, street lights are, you know, pr approximately every 75 feet. And it's like, there's a pole, a light, an empty pole, a light. Um, in Sun Valley, in days gone by, a number of the previous residents paid for security, you know, security lighting. Yeah. Um, and um, that kind of lit up the end of the street. Those, those days, and, and it still happens on uh, Woodstock Street. Uh, uh, the, they had a number of neighbors split the expense, but it actually only lights up their backyard. Um, so there was a, there are two security lights at the end of uh, um, well it's, it's one road but it's it goes uh, Thornton Street Campton Street and then uh, Plymouth Street it's one road but it's yeah. three streets yeah. and there's um, there was a security light and a neighbor has a security light but it's kind of on his house uh -huh. and so the, um, it, there's there's no light from from Campton Street. Uh, down, it, there's no light on uh, Plymouth Street. Ah. Yeah, so um, it's there's, there's a light on Ocean, um, which is the top of the street, but it faces Ocean, and it's one of those dim lights, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. light up. And it's just it's a little concerning because it's really dark, and there's not a, there's a town parking lot there, so there's more traffic than uh, and more people. Um, walking up and down that street um, oh. all hours of the day and night, and there's there's no street light. So my neighbor's light is, and on his that he privately pays for is somewhat helpful, but mm. they, it it's not always working. Um, I, I think it, it it breaks a lot, and it's just not always working. Mm. But um, it, but it's also on his property, so it's probably I don't know 25 I don't know a, a feet yard I don't know from from the street. So it's not doesn't light light the street. It lights his house, but it does illuminate a little bit. So, I mean, the poles are there, um, and it's just the light's missing, and I think probably because there was the <coughs> residents in days gone by paid for their security lights, and there was light. But mm -hmm. that doesn't, that's not the case anymore. So I, I just wanted you to consider, um, I mean, 90, I would say 90% at least of uh, uh, people who live uh, are full-time residents. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, we mm -hmm. all pay the same taxes. And anyway, just wanted mm -hmm. to raise it as a possibility um, yeah. and hope that you'll consider yeah. for the safety I and security. I will point out that we're working on a default budget and we have no extra money at this time. But let's hear what Mr. Welch has to say. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we'd have to take a look at the neighborhood. Uh, as you know, we have a contract to change all existing street lighting. This would be an addition, so the contract would have to be amended. Uh, and it's a town meeting vote to, to, that we're on the contract. So uh, I'd have to see if we can fund some money out of the Public Works Department to effective mend that. So let us take a census of what's up there and see what needs to be put up there. And then perhaps we can move forward. So we'll be taking that under advisement. Okay. I can and tell you it, was, it, was, it cost $15 a month for the mm -hmm. light. That's mm -hmm. what it cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Welch, and about the parking. Uh, how many cars? A it would day? be one at a time. One one, one car at, at a time. It would only be one. It would be one car during the day. And I, I forget what the uh, what your time frame is. You can't park. I don't know if it's after eight or nine. I can't. I can't remember. So obviously the car would ha would have to well, be moved. This by board then. can excuse that. My suggestion is going to be that we give you a parking permit through the selectman's office for the caregiver at that location well, in front of the there's, property. Well, there's three caregivers because, I mean, obviously they don't work 24 hours a day. So, right. Yeah, they yeah. rotate. There's three caregivers. So we they could swap it off with each other? If you would allow it. I sure. mean, if it doesn't have to be, st yeah, they could absolutely do Just that. Just be one car there at a time. One car there at a time. I don't see any reason why. The parking lot's quite a distance down and they have to walk quite a distance up yeah. to get to the house. Yeah. Well, I'd be yeah, I would. I, I mean, that. I would have my mother. I would park my mother's car there, but at 90, she is not going to walk the distance. But the caregiver, yeah. the caregiver can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my concern is the caregiver walking at night. Yeah. During weather, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Uh, well, if they want, you we, know. It would be just as easy for the selectman to give an exception 
We'd notify the police department. Mm -hmm. We would give a placard that can go on each vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And they just display it. The police department would know about it. There won't be a ticket given. So it would be one placard? One placard, and, and they just swap from car to car as they come and go. And okay. is there a time limit on it? or? Oh, I, she, you're talking about you don't need it in the wintertime. I don't need it in the winter time. I mean, and, and I mean, they would have, I think you have, it's, uh, the regulation is you can't park there overnight. Yeah. And the nighttime's not a problem because, you know, they're in bed at 8 o'clock. So right. um, and nobody's visiting and there's no, there's no services after 8. Yeah. So they can always move their car, you know, or I can move their car back or I can make accommodations. Unless you want to allow them to park overnight, but that's up to you. Well, if you're, they, I'm not, I don't want to ask too much. If I the just caregiver is there, there's no sense. You're going to have three people that they're, they're taking shifts. Right. Okay. There's mm -hmm. no reason why they can't just swap the, the certificate to park. Yeah, they there. can swap the certificate. Yeah, easily. And, and we'll let them park in front of the house. So we'll notify the police department. That's going to be the case from now on. Yeah, yeah. I want them to park in the parking lot because there's no place to park in front of the house. Well, I mean, they, there's. They'd there's be parking on the street. Right. Yeah, in the parking lot. The, there's no, a public parking lot. They'd be parking on the street in front of your your folks' home. That's where, but that's where I have the random, the, the meals being delivered and the VNA coming in and, and got visitors. plenty of frontage there for them to park. No, and they don't. VNA no. when they arrive. Uh, they, they, no, they, they don't. They, they have to park in front of, um, they have, actually have to block the neighbor's yard and the mailboxes and the mailmen don't deliver the mail okay. if the, somebody's parked in uh, front of the mailbox. Then you'd need three parking spaces in the parking lot. I just need one because there's only one person at a time. But well, they each have a card. Because what they'll you, be coming at different what times. You, what you're telling me is they that, could, yeah. Okay, that the Meals on Wheels people are not going to be able to park in front of the house. Well, the they care. they're only going to be there for a short time. Yeah. DNA, the right. hospice is only there for a short in time. The family comes and visits. Um, I, I mean, I have a Hampton. I have a Hampton yeah. parking sticker. Um, my brother, my brother, yeah. a lot of us do. Um, and it, so, so it, but it's just there's only there's only one space. <laughs> okay. In front, yeah. The reason and, I'm suggesting in front of the house is because we have multiple requests every year for people to use the parking lot who right. don't reside here. Right. Okay. And we've turned every one of them down up until now. Yeah. Uh, and it's, well, it's it makes it, it makes for a problem for the town and for the police department because we have to give them special stickers to park there. But so we can do that if the board wishes. No, um, parking in front of that, it's just, it's just, it's, uh, it's not, it's not, an, if that's what doesn't work out, we can't, they, we park in the neighbors, so it's just, it's one car, it's only for the, it's only, uh, you know, for the, for the summertime, they've been residents for well over 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, My concern was safety and weather. Yeah. You're going to have summer storms. You're going to have fall storms. Yeah, well, they'll have to carry an umbrella, you know, uh -huh. or or they, you know, or I'll pick them up and drive them. I mean, I'm 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 more worried about um, not having not having access to the house to so be able to get into the house because there's a car because the caregiver's okay. car's in the way. Up to the board. It's a long walk. It's up to you folks. Make the motion to get the parking. One placard. Yeah, one placard. One well, placard that, they that will be um, given back at the end of the season. Yeah. Yes, that would be um, wonderful. Because part of what the issue is here is there's been so many people to deny. This is the first one I've seen that hasn't been denied. So that's really why it's an issue. That. Mrs. Wolsey. One placard. You have three drivers. Okay, three we've already vehicles. decided. We have one swap placard. swap it off amongst each other. Yeah, as they yeah. change ship, they swap. There's not a problem. Are they so well? I know, but are they all arriving? We're going to let them take care of it. Yeah, this is what we'll let them yeah. worry about. That. Uh, okay. yeah. Gina, did you have anything? Okay. So we're going to give one placard to let them park in the resident lot. Yes. Yes. Right. It's not a resident lot. It's a town lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for resident. For residents yeah. of the whole yeah. the whole town. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so any not other? Just, not just for the residents of Sun Valley. Yeah. Okay. Now. Any sure. other comment? So, all those in favor? Against? I'll abstain. One, ab one, ab abstain one person abstaining, and you'll get your pla. How will she get the placard? That'll come from Christina. Someone will have to come in and talk to her. Okay. Tell her what you need, how you need it, and we'll take care of it. Really she usually do. deals with these deals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then I've, we'll I've take. With her. Fred's okay. going to. Um, we'll take the other under advisement about the uh the we'll take a look yeah. and see and what's we'll there and what we've got to do all right i did take pictures but yeah. i forgot my computer so you have to look at them on the phone <laughs> oh, we'll just so have to look, look at it so we have I, a good I, idea. I appreciate it thank you very thanks much thanks for coming in tonight thank you thank, thank you. you okay thank you. Um, i'm very impressed by all you do <laughs> thank you we appreciate it <laughs> thank you good night you'll just have to make more appointments <laughs> <laughs> 
Next, we have uh, the town manager's report. Hey, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the temporary force main for sewer has been removed, uh, almost all of it from uh, Route 101. It's been cleaned. Uh, the vendor that we, we rented it from has been picking it up. Most of it is gone. Uh, I will tell you that, of course, Carl came in and talked about the temporary water pipe that's being put in. Mm -hmm. uh, we left the section that, that traversed the outside edge of the bridge so they could run the temporary water pipe through it. Oh. On the old, on the special hangers we had made to hang yeah. the temporary pipe, uh, that way it doesn't have to be on our new bridge, huh. uh, and there wouldn't be a support problem, and it wouldn't be too close to the sewer lines, that's good. which was always a problem for us to begin with. So, that's all being accommodated. Uh, final cleanup is being uh, is being put forward, and, and we're there moving expeditiously to get things done. The new sewer lines are in fact working; uh -huh. they have been working now for over a week. Uh, we have talked to the State Department of uh, Environmental Services, and we will complete the testing by the end of this month just to make sure that everything is fine with the, uh, the lines, the old lines that run underneath the marsh. They have been decommissioned. The ends have been sealed and cemented. So nothing's going to go in, nothing's going to come out at this point. Good. Uh, but the, the testing will be completed. We have a directive from the state to complete that, and we will file that sometime at the beginning of next month to show them exactly what's been going on as far as water testing and, and uh, re regime is at the, at, the, at the bridge where all the testing takes place. The Department of Public Works is, is getting ready to start the Park Avenue work. Uh, they expect that that'll be the, either the first or second week of July. They'll be putting those two culverts, replacing them, and we would ask that people use alternate routes because yeah. the road is going to be severed in 50% 50 50 sections mm -hmm. as they replace those culverts which is gonna necessitate backing up one lane of traffic yeah. with direction and yeah. forcing people to go one at a time. I had a communication today from the town uh, tax, uh, the town clerk, excuse me. Uh, she just wants everybody to know that they should, if you haven't licensed your dog, please come in and do it so that you can avoid the increased, very much increased fines that take a place on, on uh, July 1st. Wow. Um, they can double and triple depending on how long you have not licensed your, your dog. And I'll also remind people that uh, under an ordinance, um, you won't be able to get a landfill permit if you haven't licensed your dog. So you can't go to the transfer station and dispose of trash. Mm. So we don't want that to happen. Please come in and, and license the dog. Mm. We have had a problem at the Ice Pond Dam. Uh, as you know, we had put a device on to prohibit people from taking the boards out or putting new boards in and there was a locking device there with a uh, padlock somebody has cut the padlock off Ooh. taken that away and they put two additional splash boards in which raised the uh, the water level above the face of the dam uh, that dam is at its maximum height not to be licensed uh, there could be as much as a twenty thousand dollar fine for bringing new flashboards in, increase, increasing the size of the dam and increasing the amount of water that's impounded, uh, not to mention it's technically a violation of destruction of public property. Mm. So we, whoever is doing this, please stop. Uh, the previous estimate we had for a, a full-size dam at that location was more than half a million dollars. If the state decides because somebody has been violating it and something happens to the dam, we could be faced with that additional expense. We really don't want that to happen. So whoever's doing this, please stop. It's not a good idea to continue that. Um, the fire truck auction ride that you had permitted <laughs> for um, the private school for Sacred Heart was a great success. They raised $850 for the, for the school. <laughs> um, the, the children at the school had a grand time with it. It was, it was a wonderful experience for all of them. And the fire department had us, they probably had more fun than the kids, but that's okay. It's a good thing. Um, I believe I forwarded to you a request from the fire chief with yeah. regards to the paramedic program. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, of course, losing two paramedics uh, because of promotions and changes in the fire department. And the chief would like to um, have the board authorize the training of two new paramedics for the department, the cost is $22,967.32. Uh, for one, 
Uh, the cost for both is 45934 We have the funding available. This doesn't all get paid at once. It's over a period of time. Uh, we have the funding available in the ambulance account, uh, but we, we would be short two paramedics uh, when, the, when the change in the department completes itself. As you know, we've promoted a deputy chief. We're in the process of promoting a captain. Uh, we probably will be in the process of promoting, promoting a lieutenant and we will need another firefighter. So we do need two additional paramedics. Do we need a motion for that? You would need a motion because the funding is under your control. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make that motion or, or, second. Or, I want to amend the motion because I have concern here. If we're gonna pay this money and we do need the ground level firefighters uh, with their paramedic, uh, um, capability. I am hoping to see that the chief will have the individuals who are, who are selected to go through this training and get their certification should sign a promise to this town that they will stay employed by, by the Hampton Fire Department for something like five years from the time they get certification. I don't want to spend all this money. I don't think that this is legal, is I, it? No. The Attorney General's role is not. No. That's it, so. No. Well, it's so hard do for we have a second for her amendment? No. no, no, well, what I'm just trying to express is well, I'm Well, what's concerned. your amendment? I'm, I, no, well, I'm, it, with Fred's comment, I guess we can't do an amendment, but what I'm saying is I'm nervous about giving people all this training and all this money and then have them be educated in Hampton and take off somewhere else. Unfortunately, it's the nature of the beast that it does happen occasionally. Our firefighters are very dedicated and they, they I know usually they stay. Are. I know they um, are. We've, we've had a similar problem in the police department where we spend a lot of money training people. Uh, we bring them in to the force uh, to begin with and within months they're gone to other towns because the other towns pay more money for salary. Yeah. Uh, that's a situation in the fire department and the fire service as well. Uh, we've been very fortunate that we pay a good, a goodly, good wage for our firefighters, uh, and particularly for our paramedics. Mm. Uh, and as long as we continue that, I think we'll have very few desertions. But it's always a problem. And, and I was worried about that. The attorney general has said that we cannot indenture our firefighters and force them to sign a contract um, that would indenture them for a period of time. Well, there must be good, union. Uh, it is, but we have a very yeah. good record. We do. Excellent. Mm. One of the best. People and yeah. keeping them. The only time that that ever happened when somebody left is that's when the town laid off four firefighters. Right. And the day they laid off the young lady was the day that she got her paramedic that the town had just paid twenty thousand dollars for. Mm. Yeah. That, so that's what was a little scary. No, it all wasn't this. by her. She didn't want to go no. anywhere. That the was action was the town, not her. That's right. Did you right. have a comment, Regina? I'm good with no. it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, questions for the that, town? Not finished, oh. Mr. Chairman. A <laughs> couple other good things for you. Okay, good. Uh, I sent all of you a copy of a, di a message from the state of New Hampshire with regarding the surplus land. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And there's a lot of it in town that they wish to sell. Um, there may be some opportunities there for additional school land if the school department feels see, sees fit to uh, take a look at this. Um, I believe they were also notified by the state, um, and I've notified all, the, all of our regular departments to look at it as well as conservation. Uh, this land is up and down the interstate and throughout the community. Uh, some of the pro projects are, are large, some of them are small, uh, but there is a lot of land out there that they wish to dispose of. Um, certainly anybody who's interested, please come in the office, I'd be happy to give them a copy of this. So they can look at it, and, and uh, it has to be offered first to, to governments, the county and the town, the precinct and, and items of that area, um, and the school department. So um, it probably would go on the auction block if none of the governmental units who have first dibs on it wish to take it and have a good shot at it. This has been in the works for a while. It has. And we've, I actually have been encouraging the state to get rid of some of this surplus property so it can go back on the tax rolls. Uh, it will help the town a lot. Um, we've had um, 
we, as you know, uh, the board had approved uh, for us to rent a side loader for a trash truck. Yeah. Because we needed one for an additional one for the summertime. Mm -hmm. And we have, in fact, rented that. It's a cost of $3,200 a week, uh, which will keep us in line and, and moving forward. It'll prevent loss of service because of breakdown. Uh, that vehicle has, in fact, arrived and is in use right now. Oh, good. So we keep our fingers crossed that everything runs great. Uh, with regards to that, um, that's and oh yes, we have a letter from the state of New Hampshire. They have about 100 curb ramps that they're digging up along Route 1A, and putting in handicapped accessible uh, in incrementations along the roadway uh, on the sidewalks. Um, just want to make the point that uh, they now claim these sidewalks to be theirs and not the town's. Otherwise, they wouldn't be spending all this money. Good. And they've so indicated they it is theirs. Now, this is going to run all the sidewalks. Uh, it's 3.4 miles uh, along the northbound side of Ocean Boulevard from Epping Avenue to Cusack Road and 2.5 miles along the southbound side from Cusack to Nut Avenue. So if you're out there looking and seeing construction going on, the state is doing it. It is not part of the town's expense, and they are paying the entire, for the, the entire bill. So Excellent. I'll speak for Rick while doing this. Are they going to worry about the drainage? That's <laughs> there while there? I've asked the same question, and I didn't get an answer. All they're doing is the tip downs, and I asked them if they are going to worry about the sidewalks where they're broken up and whether they're going to repair those. I didn't get an answer to that either. So keep our fingers crossed. Questions for the town manager's report, Mrs. Wolsey. Yes, yeah, Fred, that land that the state's trying to get rid of i'd like to see a lot of that go to conservation and so forth we are building too much we are destroying this community with these developers i'd like to see that land somehow acquired and turned over to conservation well, conservation has received a, a copy of the notice it's a matter of purchasing it yep. at the going rate of what they appraise the value to be yeah. So if conservation has the money and it's approved and the board of both, both boards, conservation commission and the selectmen approve it, then conservation can buy it. I really would like to see that. I'm, I'm just fed up to my ears with all this building. <laughs> um, I have a couple of uh, other questions for you. The grist mill dam, dam or the, the damage at the dam with the boards or whatever you Okay, were. that's not the grist mill. It's not the grist mill? It's the ice pond. Oh, the ice, ice pond. pond. Oh, okay, yes. the ice pond dam. Do we have cameras up there? No. Would it pay to, no. to put a camera? No. It's too bad we can't catch people who are well, tinkering we, around. Well, we're, we're, we've asked people in the neighborhood to keep an eye out. Okay. So that we, we can be notified or the police can be notified. Hmm. Um, Certainly, if they're caught, we're going to charge them because that's vandalism of town property, and it could potentially cost the taxpayers a lot of funds that mm -hmm. we, we really don't want to spend. Um, it's been repaired. The damage has been repaired, uh, and we are keeping an eye on it, and we're asking the neighbors to keep an eye on it as well. And what would happen if it was caused to fail because of that? Uh, we would have to come in uh, and acquire a new license from the state of New Hampshire. We'd have to engineer a new dam. Uh, as you know, the town turned down a 400 and some odd thousand dollar expense to put a new dam in there. Uh, we were able to get these blocks from the old railroad overpass mm. uh, out on uh, Drakeside Road, yeah. and yeah. the state approved that. But it can only go to the original height of the original dam. And that's low enough so that no licenses are required. The state just has to know it's there. As long as we don't violate that and the water doesn't, isn't raised to the point where it's higher than it used to be. So why would someone do this? Uh, does it help fishing or does it help the view for the neighbors that are there? I can't there? answer either one. I can't put myself in the head of someone else. I just don't know. Mm. Uh, I know that this pond, like all the other ponds in town, are going through a project of what's called eutrophication. I can't say it. Um, that means that that is filling with material, and it's turning back into a marsh, and then back into a into a meadow. Yeah. Uh, if over the long run, if the town decides not to in fact dig this um, this pond out, 
excavate it to its original depth, yeah. then um, it won't serve as a pond and all that material and water that comes in there will just simply keep on flowing right, right through. There'll be no control over it at all. Yeah. And that's really not a good thing for the amount of water retention and flood retention this particular pond and the others in that area of town. Mm. serve it it takes all the property from up behind the town office here yeah all the way up there into north north uh, yeah. northampton and back down uh, but through black swamp it all goes through this one particular area yeah it's a lot of water and we need to find a way to control it over the long run eventually you're going to have to dig the pond out mm -hmm. and that can be simply done by lowering it Take all the water out and put bulldozers in there and bulldoze it up and then just dig it out. Yeah. And that used to be done, I understand, not with bulldozers, but <laughs> with tractors and, and plows and so forth by the mm -hmm. old farmers. Yeah, they used so. to do it everywhere, including in the regular marsh. That's true. But they don't yeah. do it anymore. Yeah. So, you know, you wonder how, well, how they can do it in one place and not another. No. They managed to keep it open so they, in this particular case, so they could harvest ice and have ice, right. you know, for whatever they needed to do the during the summer months. Yeah. Uh, and that's what that pond was there for. And they managed to keep the, the vegetation down and they, they, they dropped the water levels down and so that and the they'd mow it and then they would put the dam back in and they would flood it and keep the vegetation from growing. That unfortunately doesn't stop the silt from coming in mm -hmm. and yeah. the eutrophying the base of the, of the pond, which is a, a real problem. Uh, and it will get to be worse, and we'll have no flood control up there sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Are you finished, Mrs. Wolsey? Um, it's one more quick thing for Fred. And I, I noticed uh, you had a little message or something about people not putting um, material in the sewer lines that will clog everything up. Uh, could we possibly put an announcement on Channel 22 with that? That nothing but human waste <laughs> and toilet paper should go in. It's terrible with the stuff that people apparently are putting in those lines. We, we have the same problem as the city of New York has and every other place that runs a sewer system. Yeah. Um, if you put handy wipes, if you put baby wipes, if you put uh, uh, towels, uh, paper towels, yeah. and that sort of thing down the sewer, it yeah. will eventually plug the sewer uh, the city of New York went through one that plugged a, uh, a sewer that three men could walk through and uh, it backed up a yeah. major portion of the city. This was a couple of years yeah. ago. Uh, so much so they actually had to use pneumatic drills huh. to unblock the sewer. It was, a, yeah. it was a real problem. We have the same problem here and the problem here if it gets too large means it will plug the sewer and right. back sewage up into people's basements. Could we possibly put some kind of and an We ad? have from time to time I'll put announcements out on this and we've talked if, about it. If, if we can put a little ad screen, because yeah. Public Works did a great job on the waste and recycling information. And if we could put one screen on Channel 22 with the information on not clogging the drain. I will the ask sewer. them. We've done that once before, so I will ask them okay. again. And it appears that the final subcontractor has been paid uh, for the... Uh, Grist mill work. The I, don't, I don't know if it's the final subcontractor, well, but one of those has paid. But one of the final subcontractors right. has been compensated finally. Gina? Yeah, Mr. Town Manager, I believe that's the second document we've received in the state of New Hampshire where they claim the sidewalks as their own. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, and, great. And we're very happy to give them to them yes. since they already have a deed to them. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Are you finished? Yep. Yeah. Mr. Waddell. Fine. I'm all set. Okay. Mr. Chairman, there is one other thing, no. and that is that the state of New Hampshire has presented to the town of Hampton oh my. the Public Health Partner Award awarded to the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, in recognition of your outstanding partnership with the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Public Health Services, and responding to the 2018 Legionnaire's disease outbreak in your community. Oh. <laughs> this was given the fourth day of June, 2019, to the uh, to the town on behalf of the state of New Hampshire. Oh my goodness! Yeah. We're planning on mounting that on the wall upstairs. So that I've seen, it. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's moving on to old business, approval of submittal of CIP to the CIP committee. Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe. Um, 
two weeks ago I presented the board with the, the CIP for the two years 2000 to 2005. Yep. Yep. Um, my request is that we be allowed to present this to the CIP committee. These are the cumulative reports of the various departments mm -hmm. is what it is. Yep. So the CIP committee and its membership can go over this, scrutinize it, and come back with a recommendation to Good. the town. Good. I'll make the motion that we I'll second. Move it. Okay. Perfect. All those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. Good. S two is non-union employees compensation changes. Mr. Chairman, um, as you know and the board knows, there is included within the annual budget a... Uh, a misnomered appropriation uh, that's there to give non-union employees, if the board should so choose, increases in wages uh, for the coming year. I've given you a, a, a memorandum that was uh, devised by our uh, deputy town manager. Um, I've seen it. The finance director has seen it. We're, we're sending it to you for your information. Uh, first, I think the first thing you need to do is you need to focus on whether or not you even want to go here. Even though the money is there, you may not wish to go there, and you have to think about that. Um, this would be moving, uh, first focus on moving all, all non-union employees who are below the minimum salary level recommended up to at least halfway to the minimum level, which is the 2019 stated goal of the board. Second would be to take any remaining funds and evenly distribute that sum across the non-union employees. Or third, any non-union employee who exceeds the maximum level for the position in the, in the personnel matrix, we recommend that, you, that they be given a one-time merit bonus payment, not a wage adjustment for, the, um, the, for that portion which is above the maximum identified in the seller range of the position. Those appear to be the, the, actually the four particular questions you, the board needs to deal with. We've given you a, a, a chart mm -hmm. of where it all stands. I realize this is somewhat of a complicated motion, but um, it's something I think that needs to be, the board needs to decide it so that we don't get so late into the year yeah. as we did one year where this took place in no, late November. Um, it's, it's, we need to make the decision up front so the board is comfortable with it and we can move on with the budget process. Mrs. Wolseley? If I'm looking at uh, the same thing, I believe you gave that to us, Fred, and it shows a uh, comparison with wages for the same position in other towns. It had... Well, this, is, this, this one here is for the non-union yes, scale. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Though I think the one that I have, and I, I can't see it here, but I've got some, I'm drowning in paperwork. Yeah, well. But it seems that on the couple of the pages there, it shows what some of the other communities are paying for that particular position. Well, I think. That's the one I looked yeah. at. I think what happened here was you, you employed a company to come in. MRI and they yes. came in and gave you a wage analysis yeah. and they used the number of towns to compare us with. Right, that's uh, what I was thinking of. And they came up with a, a general pay scale plan for the town which was good for about five years Yeah. Uh, and the board had said that you wanted to try to move towards that pay scale plan for the community uh, in steps uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we certainly recommend that if you're going to do that that you do at least part of it this year. Now, is that the same MRI that does our assessing? Yes. Yes, sir. Different division, yes. but... Okay. Um, I'm prepared to move that we do not make any pay raises, increases this year for non-union um, employees. None. Oh, uh, I'm not going to second that, but I have a uh, different motion in mind. Okay. Do we have a second for that? Obviously not. Uh, Wait. I would just like to uh, say I'm uncomfortable to do anything like this without having Jamie here, who's in been working with Ugh. this uh, uh, MRI and has been a big part of this. So seeing none, did you have a, um, a uh, Yeah, well, seeing that we closed the transfer, well, no, because if the board's not ready to talk about it, that's fine, too, but seeing <coughs> that we closed the transfer station on Sunday afternoon, which I talked to Jen Hale last time she was in, 
we're saving about $30,000 there. I would say that if anyone is so looking to get a wage or if the selectmen are so looking to use that $25,000 to bring it up using MRI or any other device or mechanism we find fit, that it should be in the form of a warrant article so that the voters may have the option for it as well. Because when looking at the financials, I know that we had some other elected officials who um, had put raises in the budget last year, which obviously we had a default budget, so they did not get that raise. So I think any raises for this year going forward, well, for this year anyway, and I got to tell you the way we do raises, I, I don't like. I think just blanketing everyone at 1%, 2%, whatever it is, is ridiculous. I do like Jamie's idea of the bonuses. I've talked with him about that before, rather than just pay raises, because a lot of times what happens is we give someone a pay raise and they leave, and then another person moves in, and they're now getting that wage, whatever it was raised to. So I think for this year, especially after the fall budget, and especially after moving a CIP plan, that has just Public Works alone for $2,023.4 million that we shouldn't do anything with that $25,000 that's sitting in the default budget because we might need it for something else. I think it would be absolutely insane to not give it any, any raises. If you walk around any place, go into any store today, you go into McDonald's and they're offering $13 an hour plus tuition assistance. I mean, the, the market says that people are, are worth more money right now. There's not a lot of people out there looking for employment. Everybody's looking to employ somebody. I think our, our, our non-union people do just as good a job as our union people. And all our union people got a raise. They all, because they negotiate the raise. All right, we may not, it may, should be done differently maybe. But to, to say no raise whatsoever, I think is insane. I think people should be rewarded for the job that they've done. And I think I agree with you that we should wait until and have Jamie in here to go over this and discuss it. But I think uh, to say no raise is insane. Just to clarify, I never said no wage increases. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Okay, just to clarify. Rusty. Good Lord. I agree with you. I think we ought to have Jamie come in and talk to us about it. I think, uh, as Jim said, you know, we have, uh, uh, the market right now is definitely uh, hard. I noticed a sign out front, we're looking for people to work for the public works because they can't get people to work. The, the money's not there. Uh, we're looking for some of our employees because the money is not there. So I really think we need to look at it, but I think it'd be a good idea to have Jamie come in and talk to it because I think we, you know, now's the time, you know, that we, we need to do it. And if we can, you know, we talked a long time ago about coming up to the uh, the MRI study and th this brings it up doesn't bring it all the way up to what it was but it, it starts it in that way so yeah and I for one also think that we have to have a full discussion of this before there are any motions made or seconded uh, it's not something that we can rush into um, so that's why I wouldn't be in favor of uh, anything, making any changes without talking to the person that's been in charge of this whole project. So Mrs. can we Wilson, put it on the agenda I, for the next meeting? Um, if, if, w what do you think, Mr. Welch, about having... Up to the board. you want to discuss yeah, well, the next meeting? Yeah, bring them in for that, please. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. I'm not going to name the department or department head, but last year we had a long time department head retire after something like 29 years and the replacement came in at the same salary that she left. I think that's crazy. That individual should have had a bit of a starting uh, salary in the position after the individual who preceded him spent 29 years of service to the town of Hampton. There was about an $18,000 increase when the new replacement person was hired. $18,000. Well, we'll and that's keep discussing this ridiculous. In, in two weeks, and you can bring these points forward. Um, uh, 
So next we have parking for Deborah Couture. Couture. Couture uh, on F Street. Mr. Walsh. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we analyzed this. Um, there is, in fact, a provision within the zoning ordinance that says that in the business seasonal zone, um, if you're renting property, you have to provide parking. However, uh, the property in question, which is a motel hotel, uh, has no parking. Uh, it was erected that way before zoning was introduced. Therefore, the zoning amendment that was made to require parking is not effective. So uh, there is no parking on the property that she rents. Okay. Mrs. Walsley. She came in here last winter and asked for help. I think we could have at least found that information instead of having her drag through the, the winter and then expect some help uh, in the spring. I don't think she was told to expect help in the spring. We told her at that time that it was only going to be for the winter and that she would have to find something at that time. That's yeah. what was told. I know, we, but we did to do kick her. around the possibility of, you know, the. Uh, Every landholder in Hampton Beach has this problem. Oh, I know. Every single I know. one. I know. That and the, the, it's unfortunate that there have been, these businesses have been allowed to do this in the past. Yeah. But as we see, they do change as the years go by. Yeah. Uh, Fred, would there, could there be a warrant article that would require? It would be planning board, I think. Have to. There would have to be an amendment to the zoning ordinance, but there is there is a precedent for that before the United States Supreme Court. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> it just happened to be a town I worked for. Um, the court <laughs> ruled that if you give enough years notice that those all those properties <clears throat> that are not in compliance with the change of the ordinance have to commit it has to come into compliance. Oh. In the case in the case I'm thinking of it was a five year notice. Huh. So and the court could, ruled you could do that. So we could do something like that with a with a warrant article to give notice. You, you could, but I don't know where you get them to park. Yeah. The, well, prob the problem is, is no parking for them. But th it would be up to the responsibility of the property owner, whether they lease a spot or or mm -hmm. however. If they don't have any spots, I don't even see how they rent those places out. Yeah. Well, that was the you know the thing that so, sort of maybe sort of seemed dumbfounded when I read this entire thing and went through the entire process yeah. is you have a motel in the business seasonal zone that has no parking. How do you have a motel with no parking? I, I, I failed to see <laughs> well, the relevance there, of those two was, titles. There was a time when if People you were a commercial uh, business, you didn't need any parking. Um, uh, and it, go, it went all the way to, uh, my, where my building is as part of it. And then they put the requirement in that yeah. you, 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 you had a, a new building. And that, the only thing that would pertain but, here would be if the building was torn down, a new building was built in that location that was a motel, you would have to have parking. Well, the odd part of it is, is if you had residential people living there, you had to have two parking spaces. Right. Now for a commercial, one. you mm -hmm. didn't need any. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's evidently, I assume, that's how they got by. But, you know, if they can't provide parking, I would think they would have a dying business. Mm. Apparently, people want to rent the property, so because they're right <laughs> at the beach, and, mm -hmm. and it's convenient because folks want to be there, uh, but there's no place to park on the property. So uh, the only option would be for the town to give her parking, and to do that, you'd have to then open it up to everybody that doesn't have parking for free. Well, I think this is a priority, and we need to go after peop uh, businesses that are operating this way. And if it takes yeah. a warrant article or something else, I'm in favor of doing it. Yeah. Um, but right now, there's nothing we can do for this woman, I would say. We, we it, it does not appear that we have any, any, no. Unless you're willing to give the parking lots up the town owns for people to use for free, there's not much you can do about this. Mm. Yes. Moving on to the four, acceptance of Hampton Cemetery Association trust funds for $167,826.09. It's a uh, small pittance, Mr. Chairman, but uh, in fact, the court has ordered that these funds be turned over to the town uh, and that there be created a trust account. Uh, which will be under the exclusive auspices of the Board of Selectmen to take money from this account and to use it for the purposes of maintaining the cemeteries. Uh, 
uh, and the amount is one hundred and sixty-seven thousand eight hundred twenty-six dollars and nine cents to be placed in that account. The town had previously accepted the statute allowing the selectmen to accept funds of this nature, and the court has said you may accept them, uh, and they they would have to go into the special trust account that's been ordered by court order. Well, so yeah. I would suggest that the, the board make a motion to accept yeah. these funds in accordance with the court's decree. Okay. I hereby move to accept the 167 million. Wait a no, minute. No, that's fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> $826.09 in trust pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 31 colon 19 to be known as the Hampton Cemetery Association Trust Fund for the purposes of establishing and maintaining town-owned cemeteries in the town of Hampton in accordance with the terms set forth in the stipulation for consent decree as approved by the Rockingham County Superior Court on May 14, 2019, in docket number 218-2019-CV-00313, uh, <coughs> and to place these funds into the custody of the trustees of the trust funds, with the funds to be invested in such a way that makes them accessible for necessary expenditures without penalty. I'll second. And we thank Attorney Gerald for that. All those in favor, unanimous. Other old business. Mrs. Wolseley. I asked Fred to pass out to you a list that I put together. Um, I, I have concerns that we are not really sitting here uh, taking care of, of a lot of side business. Um, first of all, uh, I would like a detailed review of the town personnel policy. <coughs> and I still say that the position of deputy town manager or whatever other titles there are was put in place in violation, in violation of the personnel policy. That position was never advertised and it was never competitive. I think we need motion? to sit down. Wait a minute, I'm not through. Well, you can if we're going to sit here half the night, I'm going to have a few things to share with you. I'd like a detailed um, review of the function of the assessing office. I am not happy with, ha with what's happening there. I think we need to have a good conversation and I think we need to go out uh, and get rid of MRI and get a single competent assessing official who uh, has uh, made that his, um, his or her profession and we need a professional <coughs> in there all the time. Um, what is the date of a meeting with the, J uh, with the state with uh, joint, uh, its joint operations plan? This is the middle of June and we don't have a GOP, a JOP signed with the state. Where are we going with this? Do you want to answer her, Mr. Welch? I will, Mr. Chairman. I talked to, actually I didn't talk, I had an email exchange today with the department. Uh, they put this on the back burner because of an, a, a number ah. of illnesses in the department, back which burner. prevented them from, from uh, actually responding. I've been told that uh, because of my insistence today that something be done quickly uh, it should have been done before Memorial Day, but it was not because of that. Uh, they have told me that within the week they will be, and before your next meeting, they will have a response back to you with the JOP. Uh, I expect that they're going to ask to have it signed and, and, and approved. Um, signed and approved. They're not going to come down here and... Mrs. Wolsey, why don't you listen to Mr. Welch until he's finished? I, I can't require them to come down here. Uh, <coughs> They, they, they have the entire state to run, and, and oh. uh, I, just, I just don't know whether they're going to have the time to come down here. I really don't. And it's don't. been this way many other years, and it I just I understand happens. that. I think it's outrageous. Okay, do you want to continue, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, Walsley? I do, because I've provided all of you with the list. You be, should be prepared um, to make a I, motion if you want any of these things to happen. I had, well, I'm just running by because we need to discuss some of this stuff. One thing I don't understand, but I did have a call, Apparently, the brand new automobiles have the speed limit recognition, 
Uh, and I'm not sure the caller was saying, how am I to know, or how does the town show that it's 30 miles an hour on this road, 25 miles an hour? Is there a burden on us as a town, Fred, to make sure that we have the technology in place? I don't know what you need to do to, to, to participate in this. The statute specific, uh, it, all unposted roads are 35 miles an hour by statute. Uh -huh. The lowest you may, may lower a speed limit is by 25 miles an hour after an engineering study, uh -huh. or if it happens to be in a school zone, which is 20 miles an hour. Uh -huh. Other than that, the Board of Selectmen can dictate what speed limits they desire on public roads, as long as it does not violate state law. And they do we post it. And they're duly posted. So if somebody's driving around the towns, it may say 25 miles an hour, but I don't know what their technology is going to say. But we have to. They should look at the signs on the road. We have everything duly posted. posted. And don't worry about technology. Well, that's a good. Uh, then the next, uh, my next concern, and this is a serious concern, is uh, to have a discussion about allowing salaried employees to collect overtime. And I have a big problem with that. If you look at, and I have a rather frisky collection of old town reports, so I can get a lot of research done. Um, I noted in 2018 that the police chief, uh, Chief Sawyer, was uh, compensated for overtime. Uh, I think that is not proper, and I think we should at least have a discussion. We are having a discussion next week, and you'll be more than welcome to bring up your concerns. Okay, that's good. And then, uh, because we have never allowed salary to Well, employees. next week's the time to talk about it, Mrs. Okay, Wilson. that's good. And then, I just have a quick question for Fred on the Lafayette Trail, which is going to be Route 1, which is kind of funny. But they, the state apparently is telling us that they'll do signs and put, the state will put signs, but we're going to be responsible for some of that. I don't, I'm always suspicious when the state's going to do something. We are not responsible for any of the signage to be erected for the Lafayette Trail. Uh, that's to be erected on state highways, and that's what that statute speaks of. Okay. Uh, although they're going to designate. <laughs> Uh, basically, what is Lafayette Road is the Lafayette Trail because of Lafayette's visit here in 1824. Oh my God! Um, Still does not change our street signs. It right? does it not does. change our street signs. It does not change the name of the street. It's right. a it's a placard type situation where exactly. they put up a, a, a historical a monument or poster or, or, or sign, uh, and and that's it. And I'm not sure that they can even do that within the compact area of Hampton. Mm. Because the state doesn't control that roadway. Because I have such a pile of paper that I, I read somewhere I thought that they were they were going to nail us for something. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting, I think. Regina, um, do you this, have any comments? I yeah, I have old business, I'm, but oh. well, but, well, you, you can said read. that was the last that okay. you had. Okay. Well, no, I have a lot, but you can read this because Fred was kind enough. To print this, Did you so want to make any motions? Can look at it. Well, I would like to move at our next meeting to um, review the town of Hampton personnel policy well, and discuss assessing and also the these next meeting we have employees. the same person that's in charge of the personnel, which is Jamie Sullivan. We have him also in there to discuss discuss about the wages. And I think that we will also uh, bring up, while he's here, another, we'll have him, those th two things, Mr. Welch, plus we'll be have a discussion about MRI, which he was also active in that, mm -hmm. um, just to clear the air. I guess Mrs. Uh, Regina, do you have anything to say? For old business? Yes. Yes, I do. Please do. Good. Um, okay. I had sent out an email on June 13th. I didn't get any response. I did get a response from the assistant town manager because I was asking about the trash committee, whether or not it had been televised, and he's, 
he stated that no. the first meeting was held in the police station, but the next one, which I think is happening next Monday, will be held here and it will be televised so people can watch it if they like to. Mm -hmm. um, Good. Some of my agenda items I had asked for, uh, Chief Sawyer in for a parking lot, parking lot update now that we're in the middle of June. Uh, the financial statement review happened tonight. Christy had the unassigned fund balance for me. I did ask for some point, I'd like to have the SAU at one of the meetings I went to had a data governance manual, which is pretty much making sure all their, like what Jim was talking about earlier, um, policies for information, confidentiality, things like that is up to date. And I wanted to maybe hear about something similar that the town of Hampton had. I haven't, I don't remember any discussion about that. I do know that every time I go onto the town of Hampton website, it says it's not secure. Whether or not that should concern me or not, I don't really care. It mm. does concern me since it's the only website I go on that states that. That's the reason why I do uh. not use my Hampton email anymore. Um, discussion of current warrant articles and capital improvement plan for 2020. We handed that off to the Capital Improvement Regina, Committee. Regina, why don't you bring it up right now under old business? That's what you should do. You're more than welcome to bring that up under old business every single week. So why don't you do it? Do what? Bring up the discussion of the Warren articles. We don't have to have that on the agenda. That's what old business is for. So right. why don't you be doing that right now? Because if you want to bring it I up. Get, why can't I have things put on the agenda? Why does so it have to be on the agenda? They should so be on people know the about agenda. it ahead of time. Yes, it should uh, be. No, it I should see be on the well, agenda. Well, the, um, the way the meeting is held is at the discretion of the chairman. And we do put it on. We put it on there. And there was very little discussion over and over again. You're free to bring these things up under old business at any time. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I don't know what more to say to you, but if you want to bring them up, bring them up. Oh, I'll bring up whatever I want, thank you. But we're meeting every other week, and I still don't get the agenda till Friday. So I don't really quite understand. I don't understand. do the agenda, Regina. It doesn't have anything to do with Christina. Okay. Yes, it does. It has a lot to do with Christina. I don't understand. I go how and I meet with her three times a day. Christina does the agenda. I talk about it. She sees all the things that you ask. We decide what will fit in to the meeting. If you want to bring up anything, you can always bring it up under old business. That's what old business is for. Okay. Well, and I there's new business up. also. That you feel free to bring up whatever you'd like to talk about. No one is telling you that you can't talk or bring up what you want to bring up. Okay. It should still be on the agenda, so I don't the agree public with you. can look at it. I disagree. That's why with you. you have an it agenda. It gets brought up. It gets put on the agenda. It was very little discussion when it was on the agenda. I see no need to have it. As yes. time goes on, we'll be doing more and more. Fred has given you all of the different um, agenda items uh, that are the standard ones that we see every single year. That's all we've seen. If anyone wants to start bringing it up, feel free. But I don't think this is the time that we're going to be starting before, uh, during the summer, about agenda items, new agenda. It's never been done. If you want to do it, feel free to bring these things up anytime you want to talk about them. I like the public to have a chance to know what I'm going to talk about yes, before I the meeting with you. to yeah. get interest. It but I mean, I guess some people would prefer the public not to know. Yeah. So I'll say exactly what I want about one, the EPA, no plans to order cleanup at Coakley Landfill. So there, another governmental organization that has failed us completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are they representing right now? They're representing a private company that has done nothing but send taxpayer money for how many years? So let's see what we can do about that. Um, nothing, not one thing done. Coakley, I went to a Office of Inspector General meeting. They're actually going around the whole nation looking at, I think, eight different sites. Coakley is the one they're looking at here. So if they find that this is to be a national issue, why would the EPA decide to then not act on the Superfund site that we have here? Yeah. We just forget about it. So now we have an update here from Mindy Mesmer that at least HB 495, which was the House bill to establish a commission on drinking water, has passed both the House and the Senate. 
and it is moving off to the governor's desk to be signed. So if that's signed, that means New Hampshire will have to consume all of the costs in regulations and probably taxes mm -hmm. to regulate this contaminant since the Environmental Protection Agency once again can't do its job. So hopefully the governor will sign that bill and there's also another bill this Wednesday at 1.30 that will be a committee conference. It's HB 494 relative to removal or containment of contaminants from the Coakley Landfill Group. Now a lot of people I know were upset about how the budget of the EPA got chopped in half by 40 or 50 percent, I don't know, I think in 2016 or 2017. Well, let me just tell you that their budget is minuscule compared to the whole mm -hmm. entire federal budget. So cutting their budget in half, in essence, did nothing. It's like taking $10,000 yeah. and bringing it down to $5,000. The EPA has failed to act on this contaminant since the videos that we watched at the uh, Devil We Know that occurred in the 70s and 80s, and they still continue to fail. So I wonder who the EPA actually works for. It's definitely not the taxpayers, <laughs> which is my concern, which is my concern of why we don't just blankly give out that $25,000 this year, because it's taxpayer money, and the taxpayers, one, didn't show up to town meeting, the deliberative session. We had 3,000 people out of a supposedly 9,000, right, or 9,000 people showed up for 2,000, 16 election at town meetings we get 3,3200 if we're lucky why because people feel that they they're not being listened to they don't care anymore and to me that's a huge problem that's the opposite of why I became a selectman I want them to care mm -hmm. and I want them to know and I want things like Coakley landfill group to be um, penalized for what they have not done just like New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. What are they doing? This is gonna give them more of an excuse to do nothing because their father, their leader, their supposed leader, the EPA, has chosen to do nothing. And then looking at the budget, we had a nice, um, there was a nice article in yesterday's paper. You know, we're gonna spend 100 million on education, which is wonderful. We're gonna spend 40 million over the biennium giving back to communities. That's the revenue sharing. Yeah. The piece that's coming back to District 24 is 1.285 million. 531,000 of that's going to the town of Seabrook. So that leaves 754,000 to come back to the other 11 towns in District 24. Not very much. No money I don't see talked about for infrastructure or clean water. Mm -hmm. But 60 million is going to go to Medicaid providers because they haven't received a rate in 12 years. So we see what's happening in Concord is directly affecting the town of Hampton. Money gets spent on creating more jobs and less money is getting spent on investing in the community. Infrastructure, I, bring the t I believe the town manager is going to be preparing something for us that is going to show the depreciation of all our assets. Um, I like to see that and what the long range plan is to go to reinvest in those assets. In the last set of financials that have been audited, there I think they depreciated about 52%. Hmm. And I believe in other states they let you save that depreciation, Tom Manager Welch, but New Hampshire, the legislators decided that wasn't a good idea. So that money is all gone. So when our assets, let's say they're at 100 million, they've depreciated 52%. So that means they're worth less than 50 million now. And the investment is a couple million a year, if we're lucky. Mm. That's public works, that's SOAR, that's infrastructure. Mary Louise is talking about building. Well, you can't just keep putting up big buildings and not worrying about what's underneath. Right. The time has come that we really focus on how we're gonna keep this town going for mm -hmm. the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years when none of us are even sitting here or thinking about sitting here. Maybe our grandkids are sitting here, maybe not. But that is what the plan needs to be. When I, when I go to an assessing seminar and hosted by the city of, city of Nashua and the city of Portsmouth, had two of their assessors there. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, uh, they explain, you know, the law can be read in different ways, but this is what we do and this is why we do it. That assessing department has had no leadership. It has leadership now because the Board of Selectmen have instructed the town manager and the assistant town manager, but I believe the town manager is the one that has been going down there 
in making sure that they are doing what they were supposed to be doing paperwork wise. This year we took off $5.3 million in elderly exemptions and a couple of the other ones because you know paperwork wasn't filled out properly. I'm hearing that some of the applications aren't even filled out all the way. This is taxpayer money. Same thing, you know, if we credit someone, they need to deserve being credited and they need to be audited. I'm an auditor. The state law requires you only have to do the renewal every five years, but that doesn't mean you, can ver you don't need to verify stuff. This is taxpayer money and it's just, no one seems to care about it. The valuation of the town, that's what everything is revolved around. There is no other more important thing. If we say we're at $3.8 billion valuation, and this is the properties that, these are the properties that pay the taxes, and these are the properties that don't pay the taxes, I'd hope that figure is as accurate as possible. And I agree with Mary Louise, and I'd be willing to make a motion that we no longer use MRI and that assessing department should right. not be an outsourced department. We are staff. going to discuss this next week, and I don't think right. it's uh, fair to uh, be bad-mouthing people that we have contracts with. Uh, so why don't you save anyone. your comments till next week? Uh, Mr. Waddell? No. <laughs> A lot being said here. A lot being okay. said. Okay, I would like to speak under old business. I'd like to say that I do not agree with Selectman Barnes for her to pick out departments, and Mary Louise has also done it here tonight, that are in trouble or not working is ludicrous. She, uh, uh, both Mary Louise and Selectman Barnes voted to hire MRI, <coughs> as far as I know, and, then I went to and uh, we are using the same company, MRI, we're using it for our um, ability to do these, this wage study. All of the other, many of the other communities, including Exeter, use MRI, and many other surrounding communities. We all know that the selectmen are the assessors by law, but since the uh, 1800s or earlier, ver er almost every town uses outside people to do the assessing. We don't sit here and do it at the table. We're given our chance when issues do come up. The, um, presently, we have the lowest filing of abatements that has happened since I've sat here on this board for 15 years. So I would say that the people, evidently, by filing less abatements, mustn't be too disturbed about what's going on with MRI. Also, our person at MRI that we have been using is the same tax assessor that we had. More importantly, I think that the reason this really illustrates why the Board of Selectmen, when they came up with these uh, discussions, which I must admit I was very leery of at the beginning, um, about having a uh, a uh, continuance of a town manager's contract, you know, a, a what do you call it, when the, uh, we needed, it's pretty hard to go out and hire a town manager, uh, and that's why it seemed to work in everyone's mind when Jamie was uh, put up and we felt that he could learn from this experience <laughs> and um, Mrs. Wolseley I am talking please and um, it's I think this is why we had to uh, you know we're looking to make sure that there is a continued smooth uh, carrying on of the business that has to be done for the town of Hampton so I think it's really unfair that there's been so much uh, so many of these public comments uh, by the different selectmen, especially when they voted. I've never seen the degree of flip-flopping that's going on on this board that's gone on any of the other boards that I've been on. Thank you. May Moving on to may, can, new can I just add, you know, I, I think, I, I don't want to get into a back and forth with anybody and there's a lot of anger here and I don't know why there is so much anger on a whole bunch of stuff. But I think if somebody wants to say something about somebody, then they, they need to bring proof in. They can't just make a statement that that, that department's 
not operating properly or that somebody's not doing their job, they need to bring proof in to that aspect and to step up to the plate. Also in the list, there's, there's a, a statement by, the, by one of the select board here that some of the select men are in conflict of interest. I think if somebody's making that statement, they gotta bring up proof of why somebody is in conflict of interest. It's not in the board's best interest to be going back and forth with a lot of anger and a lot of fighting with each other. There's a lot of things that need to be done. There's a lot of things that we have no control over that we really shouldn't be trying to to get our get involved in. There's a lot of things that state legislators, state senator should be dealing with, not the Board of Selectmen necessarily. I agree that it affects the town of Hampton and we should be concerned about it. But I think this board needs to start thinking about working cooperatively together and not making statements, broad statements, about people with no proof of what they are saying. Thank you. And I also feel that I have not heard from one department or one department head that they don't feel their department is working at full strength. I just, I, I can't really get over this. I've never heard even Fred say anything bad about any department, and I've seen no problems, to be truthful. Mrs. Wolsey. This was not given it's to me. It's going to be brought up next week. No. We're going to discuss it next week. Quiet. No, I'm not going to I was quiet. not given this policy when the discussion started relating to uh, adding the position of assistant manager. I, after I have been educated on the personnel policy, You're going to which be was amended next on week, March 3rd, 2014, Wolfley. starting on page nine, recruitment. It is the policy of the town of Hampton to meet its workforce needs through systematic recruitment, selection, and career support programs that identify, attract, and select from the most qualified applicants for town employment. The employment of individuals for town positions shall be carried out with forethought for the balance of skills needed to sustain growth and assure future leadership. When a position is to be filled, a search for the best qualified candidate shall be conducted. There was no such search. The character of the search will vary from position to position, but may include direct recruitment, advertising, open competitive examination. May. Man. No, it says shall. Yeah, Mrs. Says Wilson, shall. Let's bring and this we, up next we week when we're going to position, discuss it with the person that's going to be involved. We created a position yeah. out of thin air. And you voted for it, Mrs. Wolseley. I was not aware that, okay, of all of this. Ignorance is no excuse. I, and we will be talking about this next week, so we're not going to talk about it anymore. This and, is it for tonight. And, Moving on to uh, and new looking business. looking back, Mrs. the Wolfley, four years, we are moving I'm tired on to of new being business. shut up here. Well, I'm sorry. The four years from we 2015 are moving on to new business. To 2018. We are moving on to we new have paid business, Mrs. Wolseley. And thirty-eight thousand no, nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars and seventy-nine cents. Mrs. Wolseley, we are going to discuss a, this next for week. For a thirty-two-hour a week position no, it's two weeks. of okay, deputy Mrs. manager, you are out of order. Who had no you are experience? Out of order. No experience. You are out of None. order. And you, you are out of order, Mrs. Of Wolseley. Police, is the equal you of being are a town out manager of order, Mrs. Wolseley. Well, you I are be out, out of order. order. For a long time you ago. voted for these things, and now you I will get to discuss it next week with the, Besides, with the person I that's going to do it anyway. I think you're afraid to talk about people face to face, but I'm next week you're going to have the chance. Anybody. Well, next week you're going to have the chance. Thank well, that's you, Miss uh, Regina. Weeks. Two weeks. Yes. Um, thank you. So. I said the department as a whole. I didn't pick anyone out. Things happen. Some people can't handle the position. I say what I feel. Some people mistake anger for passion. Some people mistake anger for disgust. I'm disgusted about how I find out things happen in this town by mm -hmm. third parties on a yeah. continuous basis. Yeah. Totally disgusts me. It has gotten worse. 
yep. since Mrs. Wolseley has reflect has stated her concerns publicly. Yep. And they're her concerns, her concerns. I stated my concerns tonight at public comment how I think that if we lose Fred Welch as a town manager right now, it will be detrimental to the town of Hampton. And I 100% believe that. There are departments in this town that need Fred Welch. They may not have told you, but they've told me. Right. And they've told at least yeah. one more selectman sitting at this table tonight. Do you have an idea of what could um, be an answer in your view? No, I think it's something that the board needs to discuss. That's mm -hmm. all. That's what I was trying to say yep. tonight, a public comment. Yep. Okay. Does anyone want, do you want to make a motion? And let's make, have your discussion of what you want to promote and see if the board agrees with you. That's think, why we're here. I think we need to figure out, let's say Fred Welsh leaves in two or three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jamie Sullivan's the town manager. So who's going to be under Jamie Sullivan? Ideally, I say maybe promoting Christie, but do we be, need do we still need a town manager and an assistant? No, town I, manager? I I have a feeling that when the time comes, those will be discussed. I don't feel from talking to any of the other people here at the board, including you or her or any of the others, that we're planning on having a assistant town manager in the future. I, this is, as far as I'm concerned, was a one shot. And thing. what about Christina? May, may I just say? Because so, without you her, know, it's not fair to discuss all these people in public like may this. I, may I just say right. something? Yes. I would worry that we're, we're discussing contracts I think right it's now. So we're, wrong. we're on legal. So wrong. Well, I don't I'm know about that, it. but I, I would just worry that if we're going to do this, we should have Mark Gerald here. Yes, and that, I totally and agree. we have inside counsel that doesn't want to talk to us about it. So no, how does I, that work? Uh, I'm totally against what's happening here. I don't think it's fair to talk about people's positions or anything else. And I think if we are going to talk about it, they should be here or it should be done in private. Absolutely. So this is wrong. I hate hearing people take shots. I, it just hasn't I happened the last 15 years I've been here, like what's happening now, and people picking up what's wrong in every department. They're, that's their view. Yes, is. This is a board. We have five people here making these decisions. Independent people. And you'll find that everyone's not always going to agree with you. Regina, Mr. or without yeah, I'm not with asking me. Anyone. Mr. Chairman, I presented a list, an explicit list, and I expect to see those concerns. Those concerns, you're going to be able to address them next week. Addressed, and, and now we are confirming that we are meeting next week. It's not next week, it's two weeks. The next no, no, no. Having. Okay, we can't okay. keep doing this. No, Mrs. Wolseley. We cannot keep doing this. We are this moving on to new business. You should are, be sitting no. on their hind end. We are meeting every in Monday two weeks. Evening. It's been decided. That's Do you why want to make a motion to meet next week? That's, I'm going to make a motion to go back to the regular Board of Selectmen schedule, which is meeting every single Monday night all year long except for holidays. Okay, do we have National a second? National holidays. Do we have a second? I'll second the discussion. Uh, so we have a second We're, for a discussion. We've got too much stuff piling up. There are a lot more things that need to be attended to. And it's nothing like being lazy. We were elected to this board to work, to work, to review every week. And, and meet every Monday night. I have never sat on a board before that didn't meet every Monday night. This is a shame. Okay. Regina, do you have any discussion? No. Uh, Rusty? I think it's working fine just the way it is. <laughs> Jim? That's my comment, Mary Louise. I don't need I yours anyway. Yes, you do. You no, I don't need you. Yes, no, you. No, I don't. I listen to you so respectfully. I expect vote you to listen to everybody Jim else comes respectfully. Out. terrible disservice to the public. I agree. You are a disservice. It, no, it, failing to meet when okay, we should Jim, be Okay, Jim, we're waiting to vote. Oh. All those in favor of, of uh, meeting every week? Except for a holiday. Okay. All those in favor? All those against? I'll Regina? Abstain. Abstains? Moving to new business. Number one, amendments to insurance and workers' compensation contract due to rate increases, changes. Rate changes. Mr. Chairman, uh, Primex has, has sent communications to us with regards to uh, two types of insurance coverage. Property and liability program is the first. 
they would like us to renew for a three-year period and during that period they would guarantee that there will be no more than a five percent increase in any of the rates applicable to those insurance coverages in a workers compensation they would also like to have us uh, amend the, the contract so that it would be enforced for a period of three years and there will be no larger increase than six percent in any of the years for the contribution for insurance for workers compensation program so what are we do we need to have what do we need to do here since this would be an amendment to both contracts the board needs to approve it uh, in order to put the cap on the program um, as you've seen in the past rates can fluctuate dramatically so if in fact the rate goes down we get what goes down if it's only two percent it's two percent but if it's seven and a half percent it stays at five so do you recommend approving it? Uh, both Jamie and I have looked at it and, rec and so has finance and we recommend you approve it. Okay, so make a motion to approve it. Second. Second. All the, do, any discussion? I'm gonna abstain. I will All see All those in that favor? And have it discussed at our next meeting. Are you voting for it, Regina? Sure. So it's four and one abstention. Now, next is no parking at the end of Cranberry Lane. Mr. Chairman, this is a petition uh, that was brought in by the Conservation Commission. Uh, as you probably know, there is a wetland at the end of this roadway. People are now parking yeah. off the, the tarred portion of the roadway, and they're starting to break the pavement down. They're also getting into the buffer for the wetland that's beside it. And during along this area that's, that's associated with the wetland mm -hmm. and the area where they're parking so they can get to the beach easier, um, They'd like to have no parking put in to keep the wetland from deteriorating mm -hmm. and to keep the road from breaking down. How is this different than uh, at the end of Winniconnet Road? That's a good question. Yeah. And how is it different um, with all of the, um, I assume that they're claiming that the stuff that comes off of the cars goes into the wetlands? Well, obviously, if, if a car should have a, yeah. A leak or something of that nature, it would well, go into the ground. How is that runway. different than anywhere in Hampton, including all along the marsh, up and down every single road? How is it different from the people that park on almost on the beach at all of the ends of all of those roads uh, where the ocean is? Uh, how is it different from any of the uh, land that is, that borders the state park? or the harbor or anywhere else? What makes this place any different? They're actually in the buffer zone. That's what makes it different. All of Hampton's in the buffer I zone. I need that. to tell you that. All of, all of those buildings all along there are all in the buffer zone. Most of the condominiums are in the buffer zone. There's yeah. been a few that have been turned down lately, um, and that's fine. Um, and I'm not recommending building in this buffer zone. But all of Hampton's in the buffer zone. I alone have a parking lot that's in the buffer zone, um, and everyone else does. So what, how can this be any different? Is there uh, the, the people that live there asking that this happens? No, this is the Conservation Commission that requests I personally it. don't see any difference of this in Winniconnet Road. Winniconnet Road has come up probably uh, at least five times and it's been turned down every time. I don't see any difference of this myself. Mr. Waddell? I just recommend we have the Conservation Commission come in and, and discuss it if they want to do that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Rusty? Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you, Rick. I mean, we, we have a lot of places in this town that, that, that people park, although seeing, knowing this street, uh, it's a very narrow street, so they have to pull completely off the pavement. Uh, and so I, I do have the concerns over them breaking down the edge of the pavement, mm -hmm. and I see that more for than than just the the buffer zone. Yeah. Um, for that reason, I, I would say it is. Um, but there is no there is no gray area here between the edge of the mm -hmm. road and and the wetlands. Mm -hmm. uh, with some of the ones on on uh, High Street, this is one that you didn't bring up, but High Street. We will allow quite a bit of parking there, and I don't know why we do. It, it's uh, yeah, well, it's everywhere. And what has happened here on the board? There was a time when they would never go 
uh, against any parking because parking has been so important. Um, but it's steadily, over probably the last five years, I've noticed it's two places here, two places there, and I, I disagree with it. I don't disagree with all of um, you know the, the wetlands and the buffer zones and stuff like that, but it's everywhere. What, what's different about this place? I, you know, it looks to me like somebody that lives there evidently doesn't want parking in their, what they perceive to be their yard. So I, I agree maybe if they, if Conservation Commission feels they should maybe come in, but I'm not well, for Well, if this. it's a yard, they can, if, they, if the people pull completely off the road, they can have them towed if it's their property. No, because well, I mean, it could, what is it? Maybe no. it's a... Uh, yeah. Town's it, property extends beyond the pavement, if, remember. If, it, if they're completely off the pavement and they're on, then but I believe... Don't you have another 10 feet beyond the pavement not, that belongs to I don't believe you do in town? this area. I don't believe you do no. in this area. You no. might on some of the big streets, but I doubt this one. I don't know. Why don't we have the Conservation Commission I. come in and discuss? That, that's fine. Yeah, if they want... If, I think for us to move forward with this, if they want to come in and discuss it, but... I'll ask them to, if they'd like to come in and talk mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. And we should know the width of the town property. Yeah. Not what, just what is the, the buffer? Yeah, what is the uh, right of way? Not just the paved part. Okay. Uh, other new business. I want, I want, them. I want to see the, uh, the um, subjects that I have listed. Okay, you're the, like a broken record, Mary Louise. The, we've already handled your business. I would like business. to see that on our agendas. It's, we've, we will see what's going to be on the agenda has been discussed with, uh, Jamie's going to be here. Three of the questions that you've had tonight, you'll be able to ask but him. But there are, I think, 14 items okay. on that list. And many They're not all going to come already, next week. And we've already, already discussed, a number of and times. it's at my privilege. Thank you. A number of times. Closing I comments. I just, Rick, I just have one. Yeah? Um, Fred, someone called me today on 17th Street and Kings Highway complaining about something, a transformer or something that Unitil had put up there. There's, I mean, there's nothing we can do about that, right? It, they would have to contact Unitil. They've contacted Unitil. Unitil has said that they will apparently not take the transformer down. They want it taken down because it destroys their view. Oh. And it's noisy. <laughs> and it, it is, it's not a transformer. It is an electrical switch. Uh, with fuses, and it's on a structure pole. It's built at the corner of the street, and I understand they're going to petition the Board of Selectmen and the town meeting to order uh, Unitel to take the system down, which, of course, we can't do, uh. since they have a lawful um, easement and requirement because they have a license to have the pole there and put on utilities and, and utility equipment that, that are necessary to their operations. So. Oh, my goodness. That's kind of the, the, the gist of the story. Uh, people say it is noisy. Well, a lot of, unfortunately, electrical equipment is. But um, in this particular case, I went down and looked at the pole. I looked at the particular piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with it. Uh, they have a right to have it there, and there's nothing we can really do to mm -hmm. order them to take it down. Well, if they want to move it, they can do it on their own, but yeah. they apparently refused Yeah, no, to do I that. think they called Unitil and they just weren't too thrilled with the responses. Yeah. So Unitil suggested they contact the PUC if they had anything. Uh, yeah, and the PUC can't but, order it either. Yeah. The only yeah, thing that could be done there would be for the board to remove their authority to have a pole line at that location, in which case there would be no electricity to those buildings. Oh, my goodness. Ouch. Any Take quote? a motion to adjourn. Second, 933. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. Have pretty good time. <laughs>